albatross around the neck. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Heart of Horror here on the Dark Parade. I am one of your hosts, Bo. With me as ever, the uh the the outer space the the <laughs> celestial oh okay i'll take it yeah the occasionally cocooned <laughs> kate pollock <laughs> <laughs> oh if only i came out uh, i emerged with that waistline that would be fantastic or um, man, but or just <laughs> in a cocoon i mean i you know i say that and as even as as it was coming out of my mouth i was like i bet cocoons are really comfortable there's, they do seem cozy like I reckon it wouldn't be I mean, so the only thing for me is that I get really like bad sensory stuff I don't like things over my face mm -hmm. I get too hot like I get too hot and like I get really like really uncomfortable like I like like well I suppose claustrophobia isn't it that's probably what the term is yeah yeah so in, in a way in a way anyway yeah I couldn't be completely I'd have to have like a little hole for my face just poke it out <laughs> like, like a, a cocoon with a cutout yeah yeah just like a little yeah like you know like you get like the onesies with the bum flaps but just for my face mm -hmm. like, the, the... the bum's fine leave the bum alone yeah That's something i've never said <laughs> but like <laughs> but yeah like give me a little <laughs> face <laughs> what has happened Bo? I, I like, like how this has started thing. already what We've... has happened <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a, a like, great I opening is what's happened i don't I, I don't know this might be a surprise to our listeners but i often don't think about what i say before i say it <laughs> since when <laughs> right and then i've committed to the sentence i'll like hear it and then i'll hear the rest of it and i'm like kate you're gonna say this yes because i think and then for some reason i always think no because if you if you don't finish that sentence it will come off worse and i don't know if it ever does yeah <laughs> i mean say what i've got to say is probably far more fucking stupid than anything other people might assume i would have said <laughs> see i think you're you're being overly hard on yourself because <laughs> i think <laughs> that uh look we all have our moments for sure and the the simple fact of the matter is that I think most of the people who listen to these episodes are listening to these episodes because you you are you are frank and you're funny and you're honest and and very silly about it at times and I think <laughs> that's why people like it. Okay, but you have to agree. Face flaps not my strongest moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> sometimes I forget words. And oh. just end up making stuff up that fits like here. This will convey the the basic meaning of what like I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. But also it is just utter nonsense. Do you know what I really love is how words like discombobulated, thingamajig, thingamabob are, are legitimate words now. Like mm -hmm. we've created these words to replace, just, they're just filler words and now they are their own legitimate word. It makes me laugh. But no, I feel the same. When I, uh, I don't know if I've told you this story. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Um, when I came off maternity leave, so, like mum brain is, oh, it's called, I still have it. Mm -hmm. It Like mum brain is such a thing where you just forget stuff, say dumb things. You just ugh, cannot, cannot function on the level that everyone else does. And I forgot the word for sleeve. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just, I can't remember what, what I was saying. It was, it was in the office and I just said, like, I, I instead of saying sleeve, um, I said arm pocket. <laughs> that's pretty good arm pocket's pretty good oh, and my friends just looked at me and they're like the, f the fuck are you talking about like and i was like you know the and then i started like um miming asleep yeah and it, that didn't help um and then eventually i remembered the word sleeve and i was like sleeve sleeve the, i meant i meant sleeve and yeah, it was just kind of like, okay, go, go get some coffee. <laughs> right. And also that's kind of tough to come back from of like, I forgot one of the most common <laughs> words I, or like, it's just one of those things that is ubiquitous, right? Like everything you put on almost has a mm -hmm. sleeve. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're, our lives are surrounded by sleeves. 
is yeah. what I'm getting at. Yes. It's a sleep heavy world. It, it is. It's it is uh it it is a sleep heavy world. Hey, uh so look, uh it's April. It is April. And so we happy decided April. Happy Easter. Okay. Uh, happy, happy Easter to you. Yeah, if you celebrate. Happy Easter to people listening who celebrate. Happy Ramadan too, actually. I know a few people doing that too. Or if you just get the day off, you know, like you know what yeah, congrats, man. <laughs> right. You know, look, uh, you know, especially here in the States, it's mm. not like we are just sick with days off. You know, we <laughs> don't we don't get like the state sponsored holidays uh <laughs> all that often. So Wait, hang on, are you being serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you guys had a holiday for fucking shit like Valentine's and shit. Yeah, but you don't get it off. Oh, I get off on Valentine's. Yeah. <laughs> like, <when, laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, no, like, uh, like we have lots of holidays, but they're very, there are very few that are like non-working holidays. Oh, I thought you guys did like Columbus Day and like all that shit. I thought yeah. you guys just got days off for fucking the day ending in Y sometimes. I mean, no? yeah, I mean, we, there's a holiday for everything, but there's only a handful that like, like the ones you get, get off work for, right. um, are like, uh, you know, Christmas, Easter, there's usually like you, like a good Friday, maybe, mm, um, like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, you get off. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else those yeah, are like the big get, ones. We get Christmas, the ones where it's kind of like the only ones where it's like, Unless it's uh, an independent business, you know, but any like big chains, Christmas Day, Easter, Easter Day, that's yeah. it. That's the only ones that we get where it's like, you can forget trying to f find a pint of milk, yeah. you know? Yeah. New, um, New Year's Day is... Uh, everything's still open on New Year's Day. Yeah. It's not much, but it will be open for a bit, like maybe shorter hours, but they will be open. Boxing Day, shit's open. Yeah yeah new year's eve everything yeah we did but we do get a lot of bank holidays as well so like we get monday off as well as good friday yeah see we don't get that we get yeah but shops will be open though well yeah and i i should probably make it clear i'm talking about like federal holidays like the the it, that's kind of what we call them if if everybody gets it off um but oh, right. but even so on the federal time or something if you worked it yeah but federal holidays right. still don't cover things like you know like like stores and convenience stores and gas oh, stations okay. and stuff like that like there are very right. few but, you know maybe maybe christmas like like grocery stores will be closed for at least a while on christmas um they're usually yeah, closed so on things day sometimes sometimes really like yeah, unless yeah. it's like a you know you get these like little stores that are like run um by a family or something usually like i mean i don't know what you guys have but like you know the little uh, shops are usually run by um asian people and so nine times out of ten they're not christians so they don't care about working yeah. on you know jesus's birthday they're like a could give a shit um, but like you know and so and then they'll rake in everyone who's like fuck i need milk you know <laughs> um but like yeah out with that like yeah, pretty much everything's shut on Easter and Christmas Day. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of restaurants open on Christmas Day. Yeah, we'll have restaurants open, but only for pre-bookings. Oh, yeah. No, this is you, just catch-us-catch. You, catch you us, can't catch get again. anyone. You can't get anyone just walk in. They need, because no one wants to work it, they have to have, they can only have a limited amount of staff. Mm -hmm. um, and which who they have to pay like double time, usually. Um and if you've only got a limited number of staff, you can only have a limited number of patrons. So it all has to be pre-booked. See, this is why your country is slightly more evolved because we're just like <laughs> cr so crassly, you know, capitalist that it's like, hey, there are going to be people who are not going to want to cook Christmas dinner. <laughs> you know, and even Thanksgiving is like that. Thanksgiving is, um, you know... A, certainly a federal holiday a national holiday but there are plenty mm. of restaurants that are open that day because people don't cook thanksgiving dinner and want to go out to a restaurant and so rather than just be like look we don't do that if you want to eat thanksgiving dinner go buy some shit cook it up <laughs> then, then uh it, it's very much like hey you are uh you know if, if you want to just show up at the cracker barrel on thanksgiving day you can probably get a table 
Jesus Christ. I, uh, dude, it, it, I'm telling you, the, the whole system that we've got going on here is so geared towards just if you do not make much money, then you are going to work all the time to continue to not make much money. It's really depressing. And yeah. we should we should probably... Gotta, gotta love that American dream, right? Uh, you know... Um, but we are not here to talk about the... <laughs> We're not here to talk about that, the social about, politics of America. Jesus Christ, we are yeah, going for that. <laughs> right, right. Late-stage capitalism and how <laughs> the whole system could uh, collapse at any time. Yeah, um, no. Tune into Darren's show. He, he gives you all of that. It's not what you're here for. You're here for smut and giggles. That's right. Speaking of smut, uh, because it's <laughs> April... April Fool's. Um, <laughs> that describes us pretty well. Um <laughs> <laughs> because it's April, we thought, uh, hey, let's do a movie that's super horny. Because it's springtime when, you know, yeah. all the animals begin rutting. <laughs> and <laughs> and so, and <laughs> you know, that's the, ironically, the shirt I'm wearing right now. But it says rutting and nutting. Rutting and nutting. Brilliant. I think th that's going to, I should get that tattooed on my knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Just like R-U-T-N. Yeah, rutting and nutting, N U T N mm -hmm. on one, R U T N yeah. on the other. Yeah, yeah. Rutting and nutting. Rutting and nutting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm so pleased with this already. This is oh, this is the best show me. we've ever done. Please, please for me, please do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Rut, rutting and nutting. Um, rutting and nutting. The, it, it's also what a good thing. It, like if, when I go back to school on on Monday and the kids are like, "Hey, what'd you do?" Uh, this weekend, I'm running and nutting, kids. You know, you know how I do. Sit down, you might learn something. That's right. Um, sorry for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. The coffee's kicking in now. You know. Perfect. I um, Yeah. But uh, what was the point of this? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we're so we're spraying and nutting. Yeah, so we're running and nutting, and when we're doing that, uh, it's always nice to. Uh, to to talk about a movie that's as horny as the month is. Yeah, in and, fairness, at some point because you know she just wants to get pregnant. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, uh, like a, a alien fertility festival mm -hmm. on screen, and of course we're talking about species. Species. And this, I had forgot. And watching it again, I was like, oh yeah, this movie is just horny as all get out. Oh uh, yeah, I so I'd never seen it before. No kidding. It was one of those ones where I was thought it was just going to be very, uh, right, I'm thinking this and I'm like, Kate, why have you even seen this before? Because it's like, it like it's going to be really sleazy and it's going to be really like B movie. It's like, Kate, those are two things you love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, what's your next fucking excuse for not having seen this film? And I'm watching this film. This is a fucking great film. It's like, really... The CGI has not aged well. Sure. But like, you know, it's 85. What are you going to do? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, but fucking, I tell you what, that has aged well. Fucking Forrest Whitaker, still looking the exact same. Man, he is so good in this movie. I love him in this film. This is actually probably my favorite of its roles. Really? I, re I, mm. I really enjoyed him in this. I thought he was, it was so different to anything that he'd ever done. Yeah, you need to watch Ghost Dog. Cool, I will do that. All right, that is the best. Right. That, uh, I will hundred, write it down. That is the far and away best Forrest Whitaker uh, yeah. performance because there is a Ghost point dog. all right are you familiar with rizza of the wu-tang clan yeah okay so there is a point he does the the soundtrack for ghost ghost dog oh and, sick. yeah it's great and so there is a moment in ghost dog where ghost dog uh who's for whitaker's character he's a hitman who uh follows the teachings of uh the Tao Te ching Mm -hmm. and is this like philosophical high-minded kind of hitman who stays off the grid and that kind of thing it's he's awesome right yeah and he's walking down the street and rizza is is walking down the street as well and they just meet up and uh i i think it starts with one of them saying like oh it's power inequality is what he says and he <laughs> and ghost dog's response is always see everything which, if you put those two together and take the first letter, it basically spells peace. Power and equality. Always see everything. Peace. Oh. 
sorry that was um i don't know if you heard that squirting noise <laughs> um it was just me doing hand cream sorry yeah. <laughs> no, sometimes, so excited, guys. no 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 sometimes i just uh fist a jar of vaseline when we're talking <laughs> just because i vaseline, like vaseline is that what the crazy kids the kids are saying <laughs> yeah well you know they're they're enlightened these days <laughs> um <laughs> but uh <laughs> But yeah, you know, Ghost Dog is the coolest movie ever. Yeah, no, that is so fucking cool. That is really cool. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, so, um, Force Whitaker is amazing in this. You've got Michael Madsen before oh. he turns south. Yeah. And all the, the booze and smoking caught up with him. It's like, if, I mean, that's what happens when you, like, just do nothing but Tarantino movies for fucking however long, I think. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> but, you know, like, he's kind of this interesting character in the movie, um marge helgenberger mm -hmm. who i only know from csi like i know she's done other movies but it, i'm like good lord you know that is what i know you from is is hanging around with william peterson and talking about you know fingerprints and semen yeah. traces yeah yeah i've actually never watched csi have you not and you, no. you and you like criminal minds i like criminal minds and bones yeah like you, you ought to uh, check out csi I think I watched one episode and I was just like, this is so cheesy. But then I was like, I'm like that with Criminal Minds and it just doesn't bother me. Well, all right. It's so cheesy. Well, the, all right. So, I mean, let's just get into this while we're on the subject. So the problem <laughs> is that CSI is almost too polished. And it's really? very, like, it, it's it's meant for grandmas and grandpas. And I always felt like Criminal Minds in particular was like, yeah, but what if it was all just serial killers? Yeah, but that's what I love. Right, right. And I think that's why I think you and I are more likely to watch an episode of Criminal Minds than an episode of CSI. Yeah. But But CSI is a whole lot of, you know, like death and murder and mayhem. And and there are some good episodes, but yeah, it's nothing like um, G Criminal Minds. That's just the they most. They don't like reference a serial killer every episode. No, 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 no. And you know, but I, just... <laughs> so I went back and I was watching some old school Criminal Minds, and it, it took yeah. them a while to, to hit the stride because for a while it's nothing but. Like there, there are serial killers and there are mass killers and that kind of thing, but mm. it's a little too high minded. Yeah, you know, especially those early like Mandy Patinkin episodes. Yeah, yeah. Although I did love him in it, I I did too. But the reason he left the show is because the show was like uh, becoming yeah. a little too salacious. Yeah, yeah. He, I remember reading about it, and it was like he was. Uh, he was just like, there were so many things that glamorize this type of thing. It's always some poor woman. It's like, it's a show that hates women, basically, because every week you're hacking one up for the entertainment of people. Like, basically, why can't we have nice things yeah. in so many words? Um, yeah. And then he left. But yeah, because it, it, it was a bit like that. But Right. But then again, you know, watching the shit that I do. Yeah. At at a certain point you just kind of make your peace with that, right? Like, yes, a lot of this is going to be women put in jeopardy. And sometimes that feels grosser than other times. Yeah. You know, there are a handful of movies. I can't think of a good example right off the top of my head, but there are certainly some that I've seen. Um Terrifier. Actually, I'll tell you what, Terrifier was one I didn't like because I was like, this leans too far into let's just be cruel to women. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And but then there are plenty that I'm 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 totally fine with. You know, I'm like, oh well, <laughs> you know, yeah, is this horrible to women? Of course it is, but it's not the you know, it doesn't seem like it's just that. Yeah, I think it's just the Argento frame of mind, and they just want to see beautiful women getting hacked up. Yeah, when it comes down to it, we're just all fucking animals. Yeah, there well, you go. Criminal, criminal minds that. <laughs> And, and Argento, at least, was like, you know, let me do it to my daughter. How about to my wife? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep your playground close to home. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> that sounds gross. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, in addition, I'm, oh, Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley yeah. is in this movie. He's amazing in this. He has aged, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, His ears have got bigger. I don't know how that's possible, but they have. I I love Ben Kingsley. I think. Oh, I love Ben Kingsley. He's just got big ears. It's all classic. Yeah. Well, and only you probably hear me right now. <laughs> yeah. He... Wait a second. Was that? Yes. Yes. Kate was talking about me. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> he stops conversation. Like, in my mind, he's at a dinner party and just like tilts his head. His ears perk up. Yeah, like a dog. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the phrase "ears are burning" for him is really just. It's a real threat. Sweet. Yeah. 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 He he goes to uh, like a hibachi restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> his ears could be on the menu um who, who else? oh alfred molina is uh oh yeah i love him I, um yeah he, he looks super young in this so young he kind of reminded me a little bit of nicholas brendan in this actually mm, yeah yeah i can totally see that yeah yeah, yeah yeah um and uh before we talk about the real star interesting note michelle williams williams yes oh my god she's like a baby yeah plan plan the the young sill in this movie um but that's kind of fun i know i really feel like that's something that i don't necessarily mean like needs to be spoken more about but i've literally never heard that i had no idea and i'm like that seems an odd thing that people go like because you know people always talk about the renee zellweger and matthew mcconaughey being in Mm. um tcm4 it's number four isn't it yeah yeah yeah. the the new generation i think is yeah fucking something um and everyone's like oh my god have you seen them this on you know their first roles and stuff and it's like no one wants to talk about michelle williams being like you know alien succubi Mm -hmm. kind of thing Uh, alien succubus she uh that this was only her second feature film Mm. the first being lassie the film version of that in 1994. Never saw it. Uh, it's got Helen Slater. Uh, and nobody else that, well, Richard Farnsworth, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think that movie set the world on fire or anything, the remake of Lassie, but it's interesting. And she did some TV. She was on Baywatch. Her first thing was Baywatch. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. She played drowning victim number one. I think it's different episodes. It, it says that she was Bridget Bowers in one episode and then Hobie's <laughs> groupie in another. So I think maybe uh, it, it was separate episodes. But then, yeah, so she did uh, an episode of Home Improvement, then Species, and then a movie called Time Master. Right. And uh, and then what was her first big hit? Um Wilson's Creek. She was in H2O, the Halloween H2O. Oh, yeah, but she was in Dawson's Creek, though, before that. I think that was later. Yeah, that was later. No. Yeah, same year, at least. Yeah, yeah. Dawson's Creek was 98, so it was Was Halloween H2O. Fuck me, I thought that was earlier than that. Yeah, and then she was in Dick with uh, Kirsten Dunst, which is a, a really good movie. I don't think I've seen it um you uh you ought to watch dick sometime that's pretty funny <laughs> yeah i mean not, <laughs> well um but uh the movie dick i mean um <laughs> not just dicks in a movie <laughs> you're talking about in a movie <laughs> <laughs> but all right so um getting into our our real star though is yeah. this was you know one of those and introducing yeah natasha henstridge Mm-hmm. who you know has become kind of a, a cinematic mainstay you know she popped up in ghosts of mars what else has she been in she's been in all kinds of oh, shit fuck if i know you know but it's you know not just species and species two no. and species three <laughs> uh, she, she, came back, she came back from number three did she she did but i she stepped out on number four Oh my okay. Oh, she's in the whole nine yards. Okay. Oh, she was in um House Red recently. All right. Uh, you know, all right, so I'm I'm just yeah, whole whole nine yards, whole ten yards. Oh, she's uh, in Beauty and the Beast, the one with um oh that like teen wolf version of it. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um she was in the new charmed. 
Yeah. yeah anyway. Oh, PSI Miami, come full circle. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she's been around, but I, maybe the Species movies are kind of her biggest thing. Yeah, I think it's probably where she hangs her hat. But um, anyway, but talk about, you know, an entrance into cinema. <laughs> her emerging from that cocoon upside down upside down and just being like holy shit who is this yeah um you know i mean good lord so this was 95 i thought it was 85 i was just seeing when uh so she was yeah she was 21 when this movie came out what yeah I'm thinking about me when I was 21. I was such a fucking idiot. Like, wow. I was just, I, I just don't. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just like, that just doesn't seem like a 21 year old to me. Well, and that's Maybe when it was, it, it, keep in mind, that's when it was released. She was 19 when she, she got the part. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maybe because she was a model, wasn't she? So she maybe was. just growing, like being in that industry from a young age, like it's just matured her or something. But she just doesn't hold herself. I, mean, I know it's acting, but. I think you're I right. Just, I was just such a fucking goofball when I was 21. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't fucking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I do think <laughs> you that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're right because she has. There's a maturity in in the performance that she gives like uh, look i'm just to be real i don't think natasha henstridge is the greatest actress that <laughs> has ever graced this over screen but i do think that she she certainly has screen presence right like she's just yeah. so beautiful yeah that you're like oh well and she's so tall as well like she's you can't help but be that tall and you know if you think about as well the fact that she was a model so her posture is going to be like she is she is basically look at me mm -hmm. you cannot help because of the way that she holds herself her job was literally to pull attention toward her yeah you know like that was her job so you know like she is gonna have that presence on the screen like you know tenfold so um you know because the fucking camera is designed this you know the angles are going to be designed so that your attention is focused on her anyway let alone with whatever the fuck she's doing but she just has like i don't know that like her look about i mean if you told me she was 27 i'd have believed it yeah 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 well so she's 19 when she lands the role she's almost six feet tall mm -hmm. and you know i mean just a stunner like you know blonde hair blue eyes for for being as tall as she is i i think she's like 5'10 yeah they say 5'10 in the film like yeah i mean she looks um from the netherlands i mean she looks like claudia schiffer or something yeah 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 yeah. and um yeah just you know you can't help but look at her you know she's she's mm. just both gorgeous and um you know but yeah that model quality beauty she's enigmatic of, isn't she yeah yeah a little bit of of like you are you are almost too like perfectly formed to be an actual human being which is yeah. maybe why she's good as an alien <laughs> yeah 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 uh, agreed for sure so all right so i i, I want to kind of experience this through your eyes because you hadn't seen it before and i've seen species mm -hmm like six or seven times in the course of my life. Cause it's one of those mm -hmm. movies that, you know, it's just B movie enough that I can just throw it on and have a good time with it. And just, you know, kind of walk away from it for a minute and then come back and, you know, kind of catch up to it. But the, the yeah, so yeah. the whole premise of the movie is, um, during the, uh, like the search for, uh, you know extraterrestrial life like ben kingsley runs uh doesn't run seti but is like working with seti and gets uh a little jingle on the horn <laughs> from from outer space and is like hey we've got this dna and if you mix it with human dna you know then something could happen i guess and he's just like well i guess we should do that then yeah, that's the uh, the Jeff Goldblum of like they were so preoccupied with, of like to, uh, 
see whether they could. They never stopped to think about whether they should. Yeah. And or whatever the line is, I, mean, I don't think that's exactly it. But I, don't, yeah. I, I think that's it, or it's close enough. <clears throat> yeah. And no, yeah. Fact, don't <laughs> so, I mean, people get it. Yeah. Uh, and if they don't, then yeah, how about you don't be a dick? Um, <laughs> just uh, let it go. Yeah. But, but yeah, so they just clone or, you know, or smush together uh, the, the DNA or whatever, and they grow a Michelle Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're like, uh, well, uh, this ain't good. So we gotta, we gotta gas her and kill her. Yeah. And we don't know, we don't know then why, but later on, it, you know, it turns out that she's growing at an unprecedented rate and becoming super smart and all that. So they're yeah. like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta and hit the-, the bud. Right, right. Like <laughs> maybe we should have studied this a little more closely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and also maybe they should have studied her a little bit more closely and worked out actually what would kill her. Right. Instead because, of just pissing her off. Yeah, cause, yeah, cuz what she ends up doing is just like, you know, barreling through the window of the, you know, kind of plastic cage that she's in. Mm-hmm. And then running the fuck out of there. And they're like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> we, we got ourselves a little girl alien on the loose and we don't know what she's going to do. Gosh darn it. Would someone just bring her back home, please? Right. So we got to. Tell her she's grounded. <laughs> right. Tell her that it, she does not get any internet. <laughs> her screen time is down to 10 minutes. That's and right. If she back chats, it's going to be zero. <laughs> oh, she'll be lucky if she sees that cell phone next week. Yeah um <laughs> yeah you but... are in so much trouble little lady <laughs> oh my god and can you imagine th- see it would be a totally different movie now because then she would just stop you know she'd be like all right sorry yeah and steve martin would be in it you know yeah oh much like the pink panther remakes is that what you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i was thinking uh kind of father of the bride but yeah cool we can go with pink panther. <laughs> all right well either or <laughs> As long yeah. as Martin Short shows up for a cameo. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he has to. He has to. He could be the um, the Alfred Molina character that ends up having sex <laughs> yeah. with her. Oh God, yeah. I, I don't. Mm. <laughs> I just. I don't want to hear those moans through the walls. Are you kidding me, <laughs> lady? Pretty lady. <laughs> uh, but... But yeah, so with with the the little alien girl, Syl is what they call her, with her on the loose, um, yeah. Ben Kingsley hires a, a team to go after her, and it's Michael Madsen who is who does like wet work. He's he's like a CIA kind of guy mm-hmm. that's like, Hey, if you know, you need someone to murder <laughs> someone, you yeah. get Michael Madsen, which you know, that tracks. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Michael Manson does that for real. I yeah, it would not surprise me. Yeah. Do you need me to kill some somebody, little doggy? <laughs> uh, so we've got him as the killer. Mark Hel- Helgenberger is what? She's like a biologist. Yeah, she's a doctor or something. She's yeah, she's smart. And then she's out- the brains. He's the brawn. He's she's the brains. Let's make lots of money. Um. <laughs> And all right, so what is Alfred Molina? What's his gig? Is he comedy effect? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he, um, I think he's like some kind of statistician or mathematician or something. Yeah, yeah, and he's a shin. Right, he is. He is there to do his business and die. <laughs> yeah, and sure. and then there's Force Whitaker. Who, who is, this is just the most in to me this is the most insane part of the film but for some reason a hundred percent it can it, it, it kind of works but i don't know why because it it shouldn't he should that he should not be part of this this is not scooby-doo although All right. sometimes it very much reads like scooby-doo <laughs> yeah <laughs> so his character in this movie is a dude the way he puts it is that he is so empathic or empathetic Mm -hmm. that he can essentially like he's he's a psychic like he can read people's emotions he can 
sense people's emotions from and people around him and you know he can follow those tracks like he can follow like it like like you know their emotions are almost like you know breadcrumbs right but i mean there are times when like there's a knock on the door like when we first are introduced to him yeah um he's like it, talking to his therapist about the fact that he can you know kind of read people to a point that you know it, it's somewhat alienating and and that kind of thing and then there's a knock at the door and he's like that's for me i gotta go yeah and you're he's like, like oh someone's at the door knock 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 oh don't worry it's for me yeah yeah and you're like, how they're like the empathetic <laughs> is one thing but pre yeah. predicting the near future is mm -hmm. quite another yeah but that's what he can do and and you're right yeah. it is even watching this again i keep forgetting like oh he's it's not just that he can like read people it's that he has like a supernatural ability yeah <laughs> which as you said in a movie about an alien that's trying to get laid his character seems to be the craziest thing about it yeah it's just it it's not the kind of thing that you have in this type of movie i don't think like it just doesn't i it, if you say to me right this is your movie oh and there's also a psyching it okay in it i'd just be like huh what right. like that's that's stupid but like it, i don't maybe because it's as forest west could just do in such a bang up job or maybe it's just because maybe just because everyone just kind of accepts it like you know there's no like they have like all of these like you know government bodies and whatever and scientists and things going oh yeah cool welcome to the team bro yeah. you know like just they just no one really bats an eyelid they're like yeah that tracks and so i think like and because it's not like really focused on apart from to like forward plot it's like as an audience we tend to not we don't really focus on we don't you know we don't question it either because no one else is in the film it's just oh there it is okay all right i guess yeah but you know, when, it's very well done however they've done it to make me believe that yes this is a legit thing i yeah kudos <laughs> but yeah but it, it's legitimately crazy <clears throat> yeah and yeah so this is the team assembled to go find her what they don't know is that she has hit a train mm -hmm. you know like like any hobo any any yeah. any common rail rider flagrant yeah she's she's jumped on a train and is consuming uh chocolate donuts by the dozen yeah because she is still a kid yeah and and also oh, the way she eats oh you're gonna say about the the banana oh right where oh. she yeah oh that's the grossest part of this film hands down yeah she bites through the banana <laughs> peel and into <laughs> the banana yeah, Which like is, she eats it on its side, yeah. like a like a sweet corn on the hob. And I'm sure it's tart. Oh, I just I just know how that would fit. No, no, that is the grossest part. I couldn't look. And <laughs> and so after eating a bunch of uh a, a bunch of junk food and whole bananas and yeah. that kind of thing then she just forms a like you know oozy cocoon around herself yeah she's the hungry caterpillar she's eaten all of her shit mm -hmm. and then she's made a cocoon and then she comes out a beautiful butterfly yeah and then the, like the friendly train attendant oh, the hostess yeah comes so through lovely. yeah she like she was nice to her when she was also in... that's a load of bullshit um like have you ever met a fucking train instructor they ain't giving anything for half price if they don't need to <laughs> that's bullshit i had do you know what the other week i literally right I'll keep this quick i had a penalty charge because the fucking ticket officer was such, such a fucking job's worth so i was coming back in the morning um after a night out and i had gotten the bus to the station the bus was held up in traffic i was like two minutes from the train leaving i didn't have time to buy a ticket at the station the app was like fucking around but the gates were open so i was like fuck all right i'll just go through the gates 
hop on the train, I'll buy a ticket on board. The guy sees me get on, I make eye contact, I sit down, get my phone out all ready to blip it, do you know what I mean, like on the thing. And I'm, he's like, yep. And I'm like, hey, yep, can I just get a ticket from such and such, such and such? Like, um, yeah, we're good. And then he's just like, um, why don't you have a ticket? And I explained, and he still fucking ripped me up. I was just like, he was just like, well, how did you get through? And I'm like, the gates were open. And he was just like, but you still should have got a ticket. And he was being such a fucking job's worth about it. And I was just like, are you, are you literally being serious right now? And I've appealed it because he's full of shit. <sighs> so, yeah, this, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, clearly. <laughs> the, the, well, this is fiction, you know? Yeah. And But, it, yes, she comes in to check on little baby seal, but Sil is in her cocoon and then just, like, lashes out and consumes her. Uh, yeah. or murders her at least and yeah. and then we have like the emergence of natasha henstridge which is you know glorious right like this statuesque blonde beauty nude and covered in you know amniotic ooze <laughs> and uh and then you know we're kind of off to the races because then the movie becomes sill is trying to adapt you know, to the world around her to some extent. Yeah. And more importantly, what she wants more than anything else is to fucking get pregnant. Yes. Just like Jesus. That's why Easter <laughs> and they're Easter bunnies because bunnies like to fuck. And Jesus, notorious pussy hound. Of all things, mate, I thought you might have gone with that. That was not it. <laughs> you know, just rolling around with his twelve boys, <laughs> looking looking for trim. Yeah, but if he, yeah, um, yeah, and then not finding any, so they just all roll around with his twelve boys. <laughs> Look, you know, any port in a storm. Yeah, although you know, Mary Magdalene, she was cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, but there, hey, look, there was a reason they were called the disciples, you know, and ain't <laughs> they like getting on the knees. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> like, well let us pray <laughs> jesus was like let us pray how about let us spray yeah <laughs> do you reckon <laughs> do you reckon that's where the people started yelling out oh god go on you know when you're in bed you're like oh god like do you reckon that's where it started yeah oh for sure <laughs> call me daddy <laughs> <laughs> call me messiah I yeah, like that that's why I yelled Jehovah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mary Magdalene's off in the corner just drinking another glass of wine, like, all right guys, you know, I'll see you later then I guess. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you, you don't need me. You don't need me here. You guys got everything going on fine. Uh <laughs> Jesus have fun, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> all right, Mary. Lock the door behind you. Uh, <laughs> put the uh put the tie on the knob. I, I ain't getting out of bed for nothing. <laughs> yeah he was uh in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights <laughs> yeah i mean being if, tempted by the devil <laughs> the, the wilderness one of the most famous gay bars <laughs> of well, the period I mean, yeah i mean <laughs> have you heard about the really famous gay bar heaven in london wonder why they called it that yeah 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 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so we're gonna hell <laughs> Eh, you know, it was bound to happen. It was gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Why stop now? <laughs> right. Like, you know, look if if Jesus can't take that joke. Oh my god! I right? d I don't belong in heaven. Um, I mean, if Jesus is listening to this show, we were going to hell a long time ago. I feel. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> like episode one. Yeah, but I also well, I like, write these guys up. You know, I under <laughs> I understand that you know god and jesus holy spirit the holy trinity and all that are like all-knowing and omnipotent but also uh don't you have bigger fish to fry have you paid attention I mean, what's going on in israel right now you're really worried about yeah. what we're talking about on the show yeah um, probably not i reckon we're okay i don't think we'll be in the seven circles we'll just be in the, the outer regions i mean i figured uh, like the lobby is going to take a while oh, oh my god can you imagine those queues yeah they better have fucking wi-fi is what i'm saying also what a good band name hell's lobby 
That would be a good album name, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell's Lobby by the Disciples. <laughs> right, Jesus and the Disciples. <laughs> Jesus. Horny <laughs> Jesus and the Disciples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, what were we talking about? Fucking oh yeah, her fucking magnificent entrance. Yeah, her, yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna say her and, magnificent breasts. I was like, I mean, you're her not wrong. Breasts. No, they are pretty great. She's oh, can we just? If this was a film nowadays, though, it'd be all about the ass because she has got a bang silhouette when she's bent over. Mm-hmm. You know when, like, sorry, we're flash forward a bit, but you know when they do the sex scene and stuff, and she's on top and she's like bent over at one point, and it's just like, oh damn, girl. Like you know, she's tall and very, very slim. She's a, you know, she used to be a model in that, but shit, she's packing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, not she's... to objectify or anything. To... Well, <laughs> sure, but also, I mean, if you are a model, like you said, your your job is to be looked at. Like it is your job to be pretty. Yeah, but it's not my job to objectify. <laughs> no, you're not. I mean, you're not wrong, but uh, yeah. If I mean, it, it, you know, you it's... can only take a horse to water, right? <laughs> I am sure gonna, i am gonna drink it's yeah. <laughs> i am thirsty yeah. it is it, it's just it, like it's difficult not to recognize like you know there is a reason that she was paid a lot of money to put on clothes and parade now around she's in taken them. a lot of, paid a lot of money to take her clothes off yeah and worth every penny you know? it is right every d- damn dime uh, nah, like beauty's beauty man she's beautiful there's yeah. no doubt yeah, yeah, she's a ridiculously pretty woman. And, uh, yeah, so she comes out and immediately is like, oh, shit, I killed that 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 <laughs> poor train hostess. Let me just steal her clothes so that I look like, you know, the host of Shining Time Station for a good portion <laughs> of this film. Yeah, that hat is ridiculous, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's... It, like how no one's double take like people are double taken because she's i guess i mean i guess she's so pretty it's almost like a camouflage it's kind of like you're so spellbound by how beautiful she is you kind of just logic goes out the window and you don't really notice much else so i guess it's kind of like that hiding in plain sight it's pretty good isn't it well and also i love the fact that when she they're like okay she went to los angeles and los angeles at this point they say is just such a hive of horniness and drugs and whatever. Mm -hmm. They're like, it doesn't even matter how crazy she looks, if indeed she looks crazy, but she could look as bananas as, you know, she does in this movie where she's walking around in, you know, a train conductor's uniform. (laughs) And it's like, well, they're... In LA, they'll probably just assume she's going for a role. Right, and they're like, well, (laughs) nobody will notice because... You know, at this time, Los Angeles is the, you know, the the epicenter of people looking weird. And so if everyone looks weird, then who's going to notice? Yeah. And. Brighton. Right. And I mean, not wrong, but also it's like that line about like, well, she's going to Los Angeles. The one place will never be able to find her. (laughs) <laughs> because it, it's just full of crackpots and weirdos and ne'er do wells and <laughs> you know i find all of that very funny but um yeah so they they track her to los angeles and they they you know basically put it together that she's murdered this woman and has molted you know that she's become a a giant version of herself and that's where we get a little exposition of like yeah here's where we got all this alien DNA, mm. we grew her, and I think it's Marge Helgeberger who's like, well, what if you don't combine the DNA? What if you just grow whatever it is? Mm. And they're like, son of a bitch. Yeah, I guess we should. Let's see what happens then. Oh my God, they're so dumb. The smart people, they're dumb. <laughs> well, again, the, you know, Big Keeks like We was... can't control it when it's diluted. Right. So let's just grow a a hundred percent version let's fucking go full fat with this shit i mean why not and so Uh, yep (laughs) so sure enough they like grow this alien dna in um their incubator and it just grows out of control and there's uh, a little bit of business with like march helgenberger and and um michael madsen being trapped Mm. in the room with this thing and ben kingsley's about to like just burn all of them 
Yeah. And they they finally do get, you know, the thing destroyed. But they're mm-hmm. like, well, I don't know how this advanced the story in any way, but that was pretty fucked up, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think as well, it just sort of like, it just sort of shows the types of characters each of them are. Like Ben King is very ruthless. He's very by the book. He's like, but the policy, the policy. And then, you know, you've got... Um, Dan, you know, Forrest Whitaker's character, who's a bit more kind of like, you know, human, and it's like, get him out of there, let them out, let them out, let them out, kind of thing. And then you've got, you know, Knucklehead one and two in the in the room, just fucking causing all kinds of shit. So it just kind of like shows a little bit of each of their characters, you know, like, and also as well, it kind of I think it brings the two characters of Michael Maston and um, fucking what's her face. Um, scientist lady they kind of bring them together closer as well because they have a bit of a a liaison later don't they so yeah but yeah i think it's it's just funny funny scene for tension i think eh? yeah and so like what what goes on with so sill ends up going and buying a wedding dress (laughs) is that what that is i think so I thought it was like a fucking carnival thing, something. It's got like spangles on it and it looks I don't know, it just looks fucking stupid. Like <laughs> even even like even in LA, that turns heads, people are like, the fuck did you do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a very bad dress. Mm-hmm. And uh but you know And she's wearing it with a bum bag as well. So what do you guys call it? Fanny pack. Yeah, fanny pack. Which just completes the look. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's very dumb. It's just so weird. (laughs) And she has this very kind of like wide-eyed kind of like, almost like she's high because she's just, oh my God, everything's so new. What's what's this? What's It's like fucking uh, Jack in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, just completely like, you know. What's this? this? What's this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And she's like, you know, wearing this God fucking knows wedding dress and this bummer. It looks like she's on day release and just having the best time. Mm -hmm. You know, and everyone's just like, okay they're crazy (laughs) and she almost gets hit by a car yeah and or does and is taken to the hospital and and it turns out she's fine you know on account of being an alien and all yeah and she can regenerate yeah but the dude that ran her over is like hey um are you okay i was worried about you and she's like Mm. um i think we should fuck yeah and he's like, uh, let's go to my place then. And yeah. And so they do. And I think th- this is the dude who's doing the blow, right? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. definitely has that like blow haircut, you know, like the, the curtains, like the bangs, like the boy bangs. Right. And he has that kind of like look. Like, no offense to Chad, but he looks like a Chad. Sure. Sorry. Chad. Um, yeah, it's fine. And so she she ends up um, be, basically saying, like, I all right, we're not going to do this. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, so oh, you wait, say. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Yeah, it's the, no, I was thinking of the other guy. No, my bad. No, this is the guy with, he, he Rafe McRaverson. Yeah. With the beard and the long hair. Yeah. No, he's at a club. All right, 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 right. Okay, so guy that almost ran her over. It's Blondie. Yeah. And then the guy at the club later is the rapey guy. Okay, so this is yeah. the guy that she's just like, oh, there's something wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, can she sense or something that he's infertile or something like that? Or? Yeah, or that he's like diabetic or something like that. Or something, yeah. And, like you're not prime spe- like species. Right, kind of like thing. I can't mate with you because there's something wrong. Yeah. And... And I think the that's when like our team of heroes is kind of closing in on her, mm-hmm. and she ends up murdering him just to keep him quiet. Yeah, and she takes off, and when they arrive, that they're bit, like, though, where she's like, "I really want a baby," and he's just like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Um, <laughs> how about we pump the brakes just a little bit? Yeah, I'll pump the brakes before I pump you. <laughs> right, uh, which. I, I do like the fact that she is completely upfront about what her needs are. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, communication's key. Right. Like, why we bullshitting? Uh, the alien yeah. version. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, so our team shows up and they're like, oh, she killed this dude. 
on account of um, him maybe not being a suitable mate. And there are rats mm-hmm. that can kind of smell sickness and disease and other yeah, rats and they don't breathe right. with them. And um, so, yeah. So then she moves on to the, the rapey guy in the club. Yeah. But she kills his would be. Right. Yeah. 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 The, yeah, the late. So great. Yeah. The lady uh, in the bathroom. That's like, yeah. You know, pushing up her tits. And it's I was like, gonna say dustying herself up because she's pulled. Get your coat, love you pulled. Yeah. She's hot though. For you know, all of her 80s aesthetics, she's pretty hot. Mm-hmm. I can, yeah. And I think actually, you know what? I think I'd rather bang her than than alien girl. Just I mean, apart from the obvious reasons. Um, <clears throat> but like I think, yeah, she, she's just a bit more accessible, hot. Right. She, she's not gonna make you feel completely self-conscious. Like Natasha oh, Hinchrich, right? you would just be like, Oh, it, it's imposter syndrome. Like I shouldn't be here. Yeah, or it'd be like, no, don't turn on the lights. <laughs> right. We're definitely fucking in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you no, what. No I will, candles. <laughs> I will only turn on the lights once you have orgasmed at least three times. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I feel like we can we can talk because you, you've, you know, I've proven myself. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, bathroom girl, she's like, she's, you know, yeah, she'd be all right. We'd be like, oh, that's cool. You seem nice. Like, right you know you could be relaxed with her and stuff right right yeah and yeah, she's yeah. clearly gearing for it so like i reckon she'd show you a good time and <laughs> and so yeah so she <laughs> kills she kills your girlfriend in the bathroom yeah, i'm sad and then she goes to uh the dude and is like hey how about we go to your place uh, because she kind of knows english just for reasons yeah and she's 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 seen she saw um my girlfriend um used that line on him as well i think didn't she like yeah. she she you know and just she she's just kind of doing that thing what's that where's that from where they fuck it was, this happens in another film probably another couple of films where someone is a fish out of water and they just they will just say whatever they hear and it'll just hope that it works and then it does yeah well you know i I, mean? I like the uh rick moranis and ghostbusters once he's been possessed by the interdimensional demon where uh he's harold ramus uh, or he's asked if he wants any coffee and harold ramus says yes have some and so rick moranis looks at the the secretary and says yes have some yeah um i like yeah i i like that kind of stuff i like that fish out of water stuff yeah yeah same it's good yeah, so she, he's, I mean, she looks the way that she does. Oh, she's also taken off her top, so she's strutting around in just a bra. Right, she's just and, wearing a bra. <laughs> just for shits and gigs. Like, jeans and a bra, it'll work, you know? Yeah. And, like, um, and also the fact that it's white. So in a club, that shit is going to light up, like, neon. Um, you know, just, here are my tits. Mm-hmm. Come here, boys. <laughs> welcome to tits. Welcome yeah, to tit welcome town. to tit town. <laughs> 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 and yeah so um so they go home and he and and i like she gets a whiff of him being a drug user or something and that's when she wants to back off and and he's like uh yeah. i don't think so like you know are you we we came all the way out here to my you know fuck pad oh it's such a fuck pad isn't it yeah and oh, damn it you were giving me all the sexy eyes, so you know we're gonna fuck. And... Yeah, and she's like, I changed my mind, valid. And then he's just like, Nah, I don't give a fuck. And he like starts being rough with her and shit. And she's like, All right, you want to play rough? I'll play rough, bitch. Yeah. And, and then what happens? Yeah, and then she just aliens out and murders him. Yeah, she just like punches her tongue through the back of his head. Yeah. It's yeah. Fucking yeah. great. It's um, fucking great. And. So, you know, our heroes continue their pursuit, uh, and they're just terrible about, about finding her. Like they're, you know, meanwhile, like Michael Madsen and Marge, Marge Helgenberger are just like, fuck all this alien stuff. Let's just go up to your room and screw. Fuck yeah, let's do it shit. Um, and meanwhile, Syl has figured out like, oh, I got to get these guys off my trail. Yeah. So she ends up kidnapping a woman stealing her car cutting off her own thumb because she can grow it back in one of the least successful special effects of the movie i don't know there's some bits later which are just well yeah yeah, you're right but 
So but yeah, this is our first glimpse of oh yeah, we're in the eighties. And she she ends up <laughs> she ends up getting the our team to chase her in this car, which she kind of purposefully drives into a tree and leaves her thumb behind. <laughs> she she spied early in the day. It's like a it's like an electrical um thing. It's like an electrical fuse like one of those public ones for like your local yeah like a utility pole like, yeah. yeah yeah like one of those things and it's like high voltage on the side and everything and then she's filled up the car with um like jugs of fuel um from the petrol station or the gas station sorry american listeners and um <laughs> yeah and then and so she's put this woman in it who's like bound and gagged and whatever after she's cut off her thumb and then she's just dumped the thumb and then she put her own thumb in it and then, yeah, body doubled kind of thing. And then um, she hops out of the car without them seeing, weirdly, don't know how that happened, but all right. And, um, and then kaboom. And then they're shooting at the car and so more kaboom. And then it's like, oh, we found her finger. It must be hers. And of course it is. And they believe that she's dead. Right. And Except so- Michael Muslin because he's badass. Yeah. Well, but well, even still, like they all go off to the club to celebrate. That, yeah, that was, yeah, but he's not going to say no to a fucking freeload of drinks off the government's payroll, is he? More importantly, I, I, almost immediately, Mar- March Hel- Helgenberger is like, hey, you know, we killed that alien and all. Let's go up to your room and get down. <laughs> yeah. And, or Alfred Molina. Yeah, so they do. And Alfred Molina and, and yeah. Forrest Whitaker are trying to pick up some ladies. And Forrest Whitaker is not trying to do shit. He just wants to drink tea and fucking. He gets given Long Island iced tea, right? And after he being told he doesn't, he, it's after telling them he doesn't drink, but they put and he's like, "Ooh, tea, okay." In all the naivety, and then like, and then he gets drunk, and then him and well, Alfred sees these two women, and he's like, "Nah, dude, I'm out. I feel sick because you fucking given me alcohol." And yeah. he's like, "All right, I'll see you later, buddy. I'm gonna go over because they are fine." And and uh, so Syl has cut her hair, colored it, mm-hmm. yep. and now is like, "Hey, I'm I'm on the prowl, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show up at Alfred Molina's place mm-hmm. or his hotel yeah. room, and we're, you know, <laughs> I'm finally gonna get that baby that you I've been be wanting." Fucking. And there's a nice moment that I really like where. Uh, Michael Manson and Syl are in the elevator together. Yeah. And, you know, he kind of gives her the side eye, but yeah. is like, well, she doesn't, you know, her hair color is different and it's not the same style as the alien we're looking for. And as far as I know, there's, there's another is, alien. <laughs> right. There's no technology that could account for that. <laughs> so, so, so i guess this is in fact not the alien we're uh, looking for you know what no it no it can't be superman because he's wearing he's wearing glasses and we know we know superman doesn't wear glasses that's right right yeah it, it's yeah. it's pretty dumb <laughs> but anyway so she uh he gets off to go to marge helgenberger's room she continues on to alfred molina's room yeah, and they get down to fucking, and mm-hmm. it—it's not until he's like he comes, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, "I feel it. You've given me a baby," and he's like, "Yeah, well, look, I know there's a myth that says you know it, women know the point of conception and so forth, but let's be honest with each other. That's all bullshit. Wait a second." You're not that alien, are you? And she's like, what What do you mean? Honestly, this whole bit, from him side-eyeing her in the lift on his way to damn right get a blowjob, right? And Alfred Molina, like, not putting two and two together. This is just right here. This is the most realistic part of the film. When a guy's got dick on the brain, logic goes out of the window. Well, I mean, th- I, again, this is the whole point of discussing this movie in April because one of the larger things I wanted to discuss in in pursuit of this movie uh, is that very thing, that moment of horniness where you yeah. just lose all concept. Oh, of... yeah, and by the way, me saying men, that happens to women. Happens to me frequently. 
this is why I have really dumb choices in men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's it's insane. Like there is there is that you know that line uh, where you're like, okay, you know, I'm really I'm turned on. This is great, but mm-hmm. I need to. You know, I should probably make sure that the rubbers are in the drawer and I better take care of this. And mm. then there's that moment where you're like, fuck all that. Like, yeah. I know th- th- this could ruin my life for years to come. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck it. Oh, no, seriously. Like, mm, yeah. The, <laughs> this is, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, This is one of those things where I don't, I don't think before I talk, but now I've got to fucking say it. And I haven't got anything else that I could think of that I could pretend was the original thing. Um, <clears throat> but like, so as people may have gathered, I've been having a lot of sex lately with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> but anyway, it's, um, <clears throat> anyway. Not, let's just be clear. Not at the same time. No, no, not at the same time. I just think <laughs> um, sometimes the same day, sure. but not at the same time. Um, but anyway, yeah. And the only one <laughs> that I've used a condom with is the one that insists on it because he's in an open relationship and his partner has that as one of the rules. Okay, fair enough. And that's, that's literally the only time <laughs> I've used because, and I have them. It's not that I don't have them. It's not that I don't think they're valuable. It's not that I don't think they work. It's just, as you say, when you get to that moment and you're just like, fucking getting me Mm -hmm. (laughs) sorry um you just do you want to break up that momentum of being like oh sorry and it's so dumb because i'm like as you say could ruin your life (laughs) it could totally ruin your life yeah and yet that moment of like oh take three seconds just to put a a condom on nah fuck it (laughs) what the fuck yeah it's so ridiculous it's our fucking our brains and this is that that is uh, that is just human nature because you are you are in a mindset where your whole thing is that you want to procreate like not on a conscious level but on a like a biological level that's the point of fucking well one of the main points anyway and so your brain is gonna be telling you don't do the thing to stop you getting pregnant Mm -hmm. so that's my excuse anyway (laughs) I, yeah, I mean, that's definitely part of it. And part of it is just that utter lack of, I mean, you're you're just hurtling towards the orgasm you know is on the other side. You hope. You, you, well, yeah, you hope. Yeah, that, that's men, men privilege for you right there, that assumption. <laughs> well, yep. uh, that, all uh, right. I mean, if yeah. we want to have that discussion, then, uh, yeah. then you know, you, like, you know if your partner comes or not. And if it, oh, if it means you come first, what, yeah. I don't, I, I, none of these people are really partners, like on a long term. I don't know if I'm going to orgasm when I fuck a guy. Yeah. Well, fair, but Thank you know, you. <laughs> but if you're any kind of self-respecting <laughs> dude, then okay. like whether or not you come first, it like, it's not a competition, first of all, but if you do <laughs> happen to be the person who, who, you know, comes before the other, then just have some awareness about that. Just be like, all right, well then, you know, worst case scenario, I got to go downtown. Yeah. You know, like, let's just make sure you, you have a good time too. Like, hopefully we come together. Like when that happens, it's the best, but I would say that is the exception and not the rule. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just hard to, it's hard to, to, to time that just right. You know, (laughs) because you can, because edging, Sure, you can, but you have to like that. That line of communication has to be you open. Have to put in work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's just you know you're like, hey, we're we're doing this as a quickie, and yeah. like you're gonna come, then I'm gonna come, and then we're gonna be done for for today. But yeah. you know, it's it, not not <laughs> in a bad way, but just eh. no, no. But I've got shit to do. Come on, right, right, right. Like we're both horny. Let's get this knocked out. And have a good time. Knock it out the park. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like, hey, you know what would be great? Before I have to go to this meeting, if I came. So yeah. let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I, I think like I don't see anything wrong with that. You don't have to be precious know, about an orgasm. It's not. It is not holy. It's just a good time. Yeah, no, for sure. But yeah, like the whole kind of the the dumbness mm. of of like when you're horny. Just like I mean, come on, you know, everyone out there has had that moment at least once where they've kind of they've gotten over it. They've you know they've had sex. They've come, you know, and then that kind of that euphoria sort of drops and you kind of have that like ah oh, fuck <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> you know where you're like oh yeah like i probably shouldn't have done that either because you know i don't know it's an ex you shouldn't have gone back to or the guy or the girl is not as attractive as you maybe thought or you know you find out that they've drunk your entire alcohol stash or you know like um you know anything it could be a number of different reasons but yeah like you know you think ah oh, shit no that was that was not a smart moment but in the mo- but in the moment you're just like fucking yeah I, uh, all right so <laughs> that begs the question then so you have had that person i think we all have that one person that you're like i should i should not be fucking this person mm-hmm, but yeah but the <laughs> sex is good <laughs> So many. And I know if we keep fucking, I'm I'm gonna have some great orgasms, and it's gonna yeah. be fantastic. But yeah. also, yeah, red just those red flags are just flying by. You are just moving way past those, making moves, just closing your eyes, hoping for the best. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot, like yeah. That sucks. Uh, I, like that's where you get the real cum brain, where you're like, you know, like because it's not even like you're just, you know, you're you're so horny that you can't make a good decision because mm-hmm. you're almost projecting that where you're like, you know what? I know if I go over there, we're gonna end up fooling around, and if we end up fooling around, I'm gonna end up fucking her, and if Dude, I end okay. up fucking her, that's gonna be a terrible decision. Oh, good, she texted me. I'm heading over right now. Yeah, no, d- dude, you remember the sociopath? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I went to fucking Thorpe Park with him. We shared a hotel room. Yeah. I, a... I, I'm not going to have soaked with him, but I'm going to have an everything shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like, I was like, yeah, we're just going as friends. And everyone was just like, <laughs> Are you got separate rooms? No. <laughs> Even if we had separate rooms, it was gonna have happened do you know what i mean like sure and i knew that it was the dumbest thing in the world because not only had the guy given me all these red flags which was by the way only about 10 percent of all the shit that i found afterwards but like you know it's just oh he's been giving me all these red flags it was done with just friends and yet four times you know and then like you have the ex like oh like the, my first my first ever love mm-hmm. like that puppy love that i think we spoke about like in one of our early shows um the guy who had the girlfriend who was gay and in love with me mm-hmm. right so my wife is ridiculous um so <laughs> um so yeah so like um i we went out twice we we were together twice so we went out for a while fell in love too much for him um he broke up with me my heart's broken smashed on the floor into itty bitty bits taylor swift wrote a song about it and then he like messages me a couple of months later going hey i miss you i want you back i'm immediately oh my god yeah and then um we then break up i was more of a mickle ball that point but then i still couldn't get over him obviously Mm. and yet continued to to fuck him and that was a mis- that was definitely well i don't know if it was that much of a mistake because it was it didn't affect me long term but it was affecting me very much short term yeah and it's that, was, t- that was probably dumb yeah yeah those kinds of things where it's like ah oh, but the sex is great like okay so going back real quick to the sociopath both him and i in the couple of weeks that we'd stopped fucking each other had both hooked up with other people and it was quite funny because we had been we had told each other about it but both of us had had really poor experiences and both of us came away thinking well it wasn't that per- like the other person mm-hmm. and um we were talking about it during the first go around at the theme park and 
it was like I literally remember the moment where I <clears throat> descended onto him shall we say mm-hmm. and I just remember literally saying out loud like I don't miss this <laughs> like a, and, a nostalgic blowjob yeah it really was like and he was like he was like yeah me too he's like and I was like this is what sex should be like he was just like yeah and we were literally banging while having this discussion remembering the last time we'd each had sex with other people and how crap it was and how much better it was with each other <laughs> Right. If only you weren't a sociopath. If only you weren't a sociopath and could feeling have feelings like real humans. No offense, sociopaths are anywhere else that is directly aimed at him. Um, but yeah, like, but yeah, the sex is, was great. So all of those, all of those red flags. Just I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, eh, the, I will the, deal with you tomorrow. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's the, the tough part, right? Like it's 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 finding all of that stuff in a single person and mm. eh, it's fucking difficult maybe, actually, maybe... I that was like a couple of days later because we actually had sex more the next day <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and all on the way home <laughs> yeah i want i like i'm sure there is a world in which you could be like all right i want i want two distinct and different relationships right one of them is the purely sexual one and then the other mm. one is like the person i want to come home to right and you know i mean you can have that it's called an e&m relationship an ethical wait an ethical non-monogamous relationship that's literally what that is yeah Eh, it just seems like a lot of work it really is oh my god like i'm only part of it i'm like the the person the third and like at the moment and like it's not a lot of work but it's trying to like maneuver it because obviously there are certain rules and things that like I not only do abide to but want to abide to because I said from the get-go my priority is her Mm -hmm. and making sure she's okay and she's comfortable at any point because neither of them well no he had been in a polyamorous relationship before but neither of them had done an E&M where only one of them was like crossing off kind of thing (laughs) and she had never done anything like that before and like so um so my priority with this situation is that you know she is totally okay and stuff like that so like navigating those things because he lives like an hour and a half drive away as well and so I can't go to his he has to come here all the time I obviously have my kid half the time Mm -hmm. I have plans and trying to find time where we're both free he can't stay either unless she's away for the night one of the rules is that he has to come home to her which is totally fair enough. Can't do Sundays because that's their day because um, she's a chef full time at a really busy restaurant. Um, so she doesn't get a lot of spare days other than Sundays. So that's the day that they share together. So trying to maneuver around all of that is very fucking difficult. But the sex is really great. So it's worth it. <laughs> sure, sure. And he's lovely. Like he's the loveliest guy. We're really good friends now. And she actually said that once, like, you know, if any, you know, if at any point, me and him stop which i can't imagine will go on forever she really wants to be my mate because we have loads in common <laughs> but at yeah. the moment she's like nah it's just a little bit too close for comfort sure. but yeah, once yeah that's the thing let's be friends because i also love supernatural and i'm like oh my god and i'm like danny if you don't make me come i'm just gonna end this so i can be besties with your like, with your fiance please thank you <laughs> all right so you know you've got him uh on a bit of a a, a leash there well, I'm just, yeah, I mean, to be fair, he's never had an issue. Like, he's very good at what he does. Oh, well. Yeah. Also, no fancy pants over here. Well, yeah, but I well, just, I only see him once in a fucking blue moon. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, no. that's not great. No. Anyway, yeah. what were we talking about? Um, <laughs> this film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So all she's right. Fucked, she's fucked um, Alfred. Right, right, right. And she's all preggers. And she's all preggers. And he's like, oh, you're the alien. And she's like, bad. And, uh, Anyway, so our our team has to launch into action, and poor Alpha Molina uh, yeah, they go gets it. Mode. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, he's murder as well. When we when you see a quick shot of his body, but it fucking look brutal. It, yeah, it looks like he just got eviscerated. Yeah, totally. And so, uh, it, like, it's down to our last three team members, which is Forrest Whitaker, March Helgeberger, and Michael Madsen, who are you know relaxed now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're like yeah all right I, I feel good about this let's let's go get her 
Yeah. And they end up chasing her down into the sewers where she is going mm-hmm. to have this this baby. Yeah. Uh, which she does. She has, what, two? Yeah. Uh, no, one. Okay, one. Sorry. Uh, well, that we know of, but yeah. Uh, she she has a baby, uh, a space baby. And, okay. uh, and the idea, like somebody says it earlier, like, oh, if she has a male then the like she she can only get pregnant and have so many kids or whatever but or, he or can, yeah, yeah he can impregnate you know dozens of women a night or whatever yeah exactly well and yeah. so what like, his sexual prowess is like higher I mean, than do you reckon he could reload like immediately i mean it's got to be incredible right i mean i had sex what was my record I think it was something, it was something like literally 12 times. Oh, uh, yeah, no, but he didn't come every time. It was one of those like stop, start things. But I did have sex with, to completion. Mm-hmm. I think like four times in like six hours. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I know, right? I mean, the guy was, no, no, he was in his 30s. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I think, uh, I think that tops me. I think three is three in a, you know. A session. One time, one of them, we he, we hadn't even separated. No, it was just dust. Oh, <laughs> no! It's just like <laughs> no, like <laughs> no. Um, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you are there. Uh, no, yeah, like we hadn't even like separated. We just, you know, we're just post coitus cuddles. Mm-hmm. And um, and then yeah, and then he it was good to go again. We hadn't even separated. It was messy. That's great. That was great. Um, I haven't gotten laid. laid in like two weeks. This is killing me. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like you were, you know, thirsty as the kids say. Yeah, and also like my mum's coming to stay on Monday, which don't get me wrong, I love it. Like I love my mum. I don't get to see her often. She lives abroad, but she's here for like two weeks. Oh no. So you could be going a solid birthday. month? Oh, seriously, but I've got a date already like checked in on my calendar for the the first moment that I'm free. Nice, nice. Mum leave mum leaves on the Saturday. Um, and then it's my kid's birthday the next day. And then yeah, that next night. Bound to wow, well, hopefully if he doesn't <laughs> ghost me, I'll be really pissed off if he does. Um <sighs> Well Anyway, you sorry, know. what? We're all we're all rooting for you. Yeah, no, thanks. I'll give you an update. Please, yeah, no, please do if you can. <laughs> so I just put. I'll be like, he'll be like afterwards. He'll be like, oh, you're going on your phone? I'm like, yeah. So I've got to update the group. Uh, right, I've got to let everybody know there was a, a question as to whether know. or not this would happen. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you don't mind being on my podcast, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I won't name names. <laughs> uh, hashtag fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. When, when you complete conjugate the verb, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they yeah, they so they chase uh Syl down into the sewers. Uh she has a baby and they pretty quickly get rid of this alien baby. They do. But as well, they made a very like conscious decision to make sure he was full aliened out when they did it, as opposed to just having them kill a child <laughs> yeah, on <I> screen. <laughs> like Yeah. They killed it. Kill it with fire. And yeah. And it yeah, and it like she like coaxes it before they they murder the baby um the she baby. coaxes it into like eating uh, a rat with yeah. his alien tongue so yeah yeah pretty quickly you know like oh this is not a normal human child no this no. is definitely alien baby mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah so they they kill that and then this is where we get into like 80s effects shenanigans yeah where still mm-hmm. like you know natasha henstridge leaves the movie because now it's just the hr giger designed sill which looks a lot like the alien with more boobs the oh can we just those boobs with those nipples mm-hmm. like i just i want to i want i re- mm, i really wish I could have been in the room when they had that meeting. 
like you... guys guys i got this okay so she's a hot alien chick but she looks real ugly but we still have to remember that she's a hot alien chick so let's make her boobs real big with orange massive nipples way bigger than the actress's actual ones and also get wait wait not done yet they erupt tentacles yeah let's strangle you holy shit he's got it that's I'm in. that's the craziest shit in the movie that I mean, is the cra- yeah no forest Whitaker aside that is the craziest shit in the film yeah that's that's the sort of shit that i was expecting from species i wasn't expect because up until this point it's been stupid well not no it's not been shit. it's been kind of ridiculous but it has been a good juicy sci-fi movie you know it's been it's you know it's it's got all the stuff that you want in it and it's it's got you know good science within the realms of a sci-fi movie you know and like but yeah tentacles erupting from the nipples bruh <laughs> it, yeah it's it's very silly um it, right like that kind of thing like you said if you're in the room i don't think you it, when someone says and then tentacles come out of her nipples you've got to <laughs> be the person in the room that's willing to say that's ridiculous right like we we all agree just this is very no. silly <laughs> you know just say no um, yeah like it's just it, <sighs> It was probably one of those things where it's kind of like, right, hear me out. Tentacles from the nipples. Uh, dude, no. That's that's fucking... Like, this is a sci-fi. That's fucking ridiculous. Okay, anyone else got a better idea? <laughs> right. What do you want to do? Not have ni- tentacles come out of her nipples? Is that what you're trying to say? I guess we're going to go with tentacles out of the nipples. And yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we don't have time. We don't have time to to think of anything else. One of studios down my neck. All right, tentacles it is. So... Yeah. It could have been worse. It could have been coming from a fucking spouse. I, that's true. I mean, it's <laughs> amazing know? that she didn't have like teeth in her alien vagina. Quite frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we could do that movie at some point as well. That'd be good. Um, <laughs> but well, that's the whole movie teeth, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so oh, they, I mean, it's a lot of chasing around, and Forrest Whitaker almost gets it, mm-hmm. and which would have been a real tragedy. Oh yeah. But uh, they end up just you know it was setting fire to her essentially and mm-hmm. you know one thing leads to another and they kill her and the movie ends pretty quickly after that there it's like she's dead let's let's head out of this sewer and and head upstairs to the real world having secure in the knowledge that we have you know murdered the this alien and yeah. and, and then we get the you know the tag on the movie which is there's a rat for some reason that has one of the alien tentacles yeah and i'm uh. yeah so it's because it's what's happened is that it's taken so um uh michael madston is um as he he was getting strangled by the nipple tentacles Mm mm-hmm ridiculous sentence um and then he swipes him off with his switchblade mm-hmm. and then they unravel and he's able to escape and he just leaves it there this is the thing like right we've killed her don't want to go check that she's not had any more children or laid eggs anywhere don't want to check that like anything any other appendages are anywhere that could be you know this is all about dna like it doesn't have to be alive to be a threat you know and this, this is exactly what's happened is that the rat goes oh there's some fresh meat down here yeah, and yeah. he's bitten into it and then gotten the DNA through that. And then it's become, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's morphed into this mutant rat through biting the nipple tentacle. <laughs> Fucking hell. Which, you <laughs> yeah. know, I don't think that's how DNA works. I don't think it is. I mean, it might be if he had a cut on the inside of his mouth or an ulcer or something. Yeah, I it, it like that. I'm pretty is, sure it wouldn't manifest that quickly, right? And also, just eating a thing doesn't mean you knew absorb its DNA. Otherwise, we would all be like, you know, part cow and part pig, and oh yeah, you know. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, like we're eating things all the time, <laughs> and I can't believe I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's just uh, that's not how you know dna happens and i get maybe and i guess you can (laughs) make you can make the argument well it's alien dna so it follows different rules yeah but that's still i don't know pushing in it 
yeah it's a little it's a little silly but uh but yeah that's the end of species and you said like this was the first time you'd seen it mm-hmm. so i'm curious like having having traipsed back kind of through it again uh, do you like where where does it land for you are, are you like this is this is still just a completely rad movie or oh yeah no i i think when it comes to sci-fi unless it is sort of like that that kind of like high concept Mm sci-fi you know like alien or the thing or you know something like that we're i mean with species we're talking starship troopers level you know where the science is good enough that you're kind of like yeah all right i can't look at it too deeply but yeah sure let's go with that and you know the characters are really likable and it's got a good pace to it and it's got mystery and it's got intrigue and it's got some good effects and like you know really cool gore i mean like you know the gore in this film is fucking great you know when they find my girlfriend in the bathroom stall Mm -hmm. and like her back's been just like mutilated um she's like punched through the fucking wall and just like ripped her spine out Mm -hmm. and like all of it like shit like that is fucking great you know like i would happily have this in my collection and crack it on and just be just and just have fun with it you know what i mean like you can't look at shit too closely like you know for example like she's gotten pregnant she's given birth within hours whereas like when they were doing all the backstory apparently it took like weeks for the for the embryo to develop and it, all right, weeks is still, you know, not nine months, but it also isn't a couple of hours, you know? And if anything, like she's mated with a human. So you would think that that process would be, well, well uh, it, like, cause it's, she's only, she's not a, she's part human to begin with sort of thing. So it's only diluted that blood pool or whatever, that genetics down further. So you would think it would take longer if anything, but again, I'm not going to be here going, oh, well, that didn't like make sense did it and being like this is a shit movie because (laughs) it's like (laughs) you know i'm not gonna be docking points because of something like that when you've got fucking psychics and nipple tentacles (laughs) so yeah i had a fucking blast with this film i'm really glad i saw it and i kind of want to check out the others as well yeah i mean uh, i will tell you right now this is the best of them yeah yeah, although species two is somehow hornier and sleazier I'm in. Uh, but I, I will leave it up to you to discover that. Oh well, I mean, I've got I can I can watch them all because I I got um I got a seven week trial to uh, MGM streaming site mm-hmm. through my Prime account, so I got like seven days um, to uh, yeah to use that as much as I want, and um, they've got them all on there, so yeah i might you, do it i might do it you should yeah you should absolutely at the very least watch species too and then after that yeah. it gets a little a little how much even time I have. in fairness my mom's gonna be here and like i don't know if i'm like uh nah probably not my mom likes a bit of schlock but i think it must might be a bit a bit too much um i mean like i said it's definitely it's definitely horny and sleazy yeah but uh well, i'm cool with that i don't all right it's, but I, we, you know she still hasn't seen everything everywhere all at once you know so oh it's so good you know so we're going to be prioritizing that also dungeons and dragons just came out here so we're going to go watch that yeah i've heard that's yeah. quite good as well yeah i've heard it's really good yeah so yeah uh cool. yeah i'm i'm right there there are like five different things at the theater right now that i would like to see and i just haven't had time to to get out there yeah uh, yeah so yeah me and my mom have got a few things like she wants to watch where the cruel dad sing with me because i just finished the book and she loved the film Mm -hmm. so she's just like oh can you hold off watching the film like i'll watch it with you so we're gonna watch that we're gonna watch everything everywhere and i might get her to watch don't worry darling and and you know a few things like that like because she doesn't live because she lives in greece um and she lives in a tiny little mountain village (laughs) um and they don't have access to streaming really over there like um they i think they have netflix but you know that's it um and the, the cinema there is it's not like we know it jim it's uh it's like it's all in um greek for one thing um and then they like have um, that makes sense i mean yeah it does um and they do speak enough greek to get by like they can have a conversation in greek but watching the entire fucking film in greek it's a bit you know a bit much and um they have like 
intervals and things. So you'll be like, I mean, I remember going there and watching Shutter Island because um, they were having a subtitled viewing. Mm-hmm. Um, and halfway through, it was just, you know, you know when they go over to the, the closed down ward? Mm-hmm. Because Leonardo DiCaprio has just had this fucking light bulb moment. He's just like, oh, we've got to go over there because shit's going down over there. I haven't seen it in fucking ages, so I can't remember the ins and outs. But, and it's all the, and you're right on that, oh shit, we're entering into like, you know, shit's got real territory. Lights go up, 15 minute break. I was like, what the fuck? The fuck is this? <laughs> and like my mate, my mate was like, oh yeah, they have like breaks halfway through. And I'm like, that's fuck is this you know i was just like fuck it. no what are you do i'm like completely out of the movie now yeah so going to the cinema and shit over there is like not so she doesn't really get to see very much um like not easily anyway so um we we always do like a big binge of stuff when she comes to visit because my mum does like film but i think that out of everything we've got to watch this will probably be at the lower end of the list mm-hmm. but i will definitely yeah definitely check out the others myself if not with my mom then definitely by myself excellent well i think it's time that we we owe the listeners uh a little bit of information as well as just you know our our opinions of movies like species and stories about being so horny you make horrible Mm -hmm. decisions (laughs) but also uh we have uncovered through the course of this show a, a a rampant uh issue with people dating dead people (laughs) yes we have (laughs) and we have more ghosted news and we does and i have not heard it yet and i cannot wait okay um so this actually this is something that you might have heard uh because this is a celebrity one oh well Um, (laughs) you'll see just like us (laughs) <laughs> just like us um so a while back in 2013 cast your mind back 10 years mm-hmm. uh, oh my god it's 10 years ago fucking hell um jimmy kimmel you might know him yeah yeah yeah. yep familiar with the guy he had kesha on his show did you hear uh-huh. about this i i have not heard about this but just uh just to say so kesha is from my neck of the woods Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's a I think she might be a Nashville girl. I know she's yeah, from Tennessee. That, that's yeah, that rings true. But that yeah, I think I think she uh, she lived here for a while. Anyway. Um yes. Um I like Kesha, but she was on the show and it was only a very little bit that she mentioned this, and I feel like Jimmy Kimmel was so sidelined because Jimmy Kimmel, I would say, is a really good host. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I like him a lot. You know, he he clearly has really good rapport with his his guests, and they you know they go on repeatedly and they have a good time. But I feel like he was probably so like, what the fuck in this moment um, that he didn't really sort of think to pursue it because I'm really annoyed with him that there weren't follow up questions. Okay, like as much as like that, like he did a little bit. But I feel like he could have done more. However, ghosts haunt my vagina. Go on. Is a direct quote. So it's this is a mirror article. <laughs> uh, says Kesha has always been a bit different, but now she reckons the ghost she had sexy experiences with has got stuck. Yes, that's right. The TikTok singer who talked last year about her steamy supernatural encounters reckons her ghostly lover may have got stuck on her um, TikTok. This is before TikTok, the app, by the way, our Gen Z listeners. Mm -hmm. There was a song called TikTok by Kesha, um, and it was very good. Cheesy, but great. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe she needs to get Ghostbusters on the scene, but give them a prior warning about where the spectre is living. On Jimmy Kimmel Live, she stated that she might need a rather specific kind of exorcism. She said, so I was told I had dead people living in me. So I called my hypnotherapist. So then she said that I had to exercise my body. And then I got a ghost meter to read it. And it just beeped at my vagina. The ghost meter. Mm-hmm. Like it's reading the electricity. I, like that, that whole sentence is some of the most like celebrity nonsense I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, when you right, start with, is. I had to call my hypnotherapist. 
that's the point where you're like, all right. Yeah, I mean, I've had hypnotherapy for my clown phobia, but it was not in a white girl problem way. It was like my mate was doing hypnotherapy and she needed someone for her profile. And I also needed to get over my fear of clowns. It wasn't like I had someone on speed. So I was like my hypnotherapist, my, you know, gynecologist, and apparently they're the same. You're right, you know, right, like, you're right, right, right. <laughs> Nobody was was aiming ghost meters at your nethers. No, no. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and then I got a ghost meter, just casually, only in LA, right? Mm -hmm. To read it. And it just beeped at my vagina. It seemed to be, because that's exactly what Kesha sounds like in that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it seemed to be accurate because I have been going through a dry spell. And it, <laughs> and it was like beeping around and it all makes sense now. And then the article just goes, does it? <laughs> yeah, uh, look, I am generally not in favor of the snarky, uh, you know. Tabloid. New, right. right. But. Yeah. Uh, they got a point. <laughs> yeah. Does it? <laughs> not mad at them for this one like i normally hate anything that comes out of the mirror but this is quite good uh this revelation follows kesha's claim last year that she had a series of steamy one night stand encounters with the other side she told ryan seacrest last year it's about experiences with the supernatural but in a sexy way mm -hmm. i had a couple of experiences with the supernatural i don't know his name he was a ghost i'm very open to it are you, and then this this is the article again. Are you sure you haven't been brushing your teeth with Jack again, Kesha? There's a reference to that TikTok song. Because she sings a line about that. I'm just letting our younger listeners know. You know, all two of them. Sure, sure, um, sure. Sure. Although she says, does seem to have a, fix, a fixation with private parts. Her penis jewelry range, for example. And then it has a link to her penis jewelry range. So. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> all right that's that it is that's very silly um, i genuinely don't know what these interviewers are doing where we that's all the information we have i'm not saying that like i necessarily need more information but i feel there is more information to be had and i feel like it's their job to find out yeah you yeah i think you're right like that's the problem is i think that's probably all there is to the story but also there's so much there that you're like i need you to say more about this i need to yeah. know like why would it matter if you're on a bit of a dry spell that <laughs> your vagina may be more likely to be haunted is the like <laughs> Is is it like if a penis shows up, is that like the holy water to vagina ghosts where they're like, yeah. oh, we got to get out of here. <laughs> Semen's on the way. It's going to be, it's about to be too crowded in here. Yeah, This I mean, vagina I mean, ain't big enough for the both of us. I also as well, like, is it like, is her theory, is her concept is that they've left ghost spunk. And so it couldn't have been anyone else's spunk because she's had a dry spell. But I'm like, love. Okay. First off, surely like you'll be clean it's been a year so i'm like if you still have spunk punk like hanging around in your regions i really just don't know what to say to you mm -hmm. and then also as well like i feel like if it's a ghost meter it won't pick up on regular semen it's not going to give a fuck it's only going to be picking up on that good juicy ghost semen <laughs> <laughs> Big juicy ghost semen. That's also a we... shirt. I want rutting and nutting. <laughs> rutting and nutting. Good juicy ghost <laughs> semen. Uh huh. Juicy ghost semen. That's the bonus track on the album of um, Hell's Lobby. Right, right, right. You gotta like let it play all the way. Yeah, and it's like that. You know, you have to leave it silent, and you kind of forget that it's on, and then all of a sudden, oh my god, ah, oh, secret. Wasn't that not the best thing when? That's, this is what's missing off streaming. Mm -hmm. There's no surprise anymore. Do you remember that? You'd get like an album and then you just like put the CD in and you just let it run. And then, because CDs, for those who don't know, oh, those who don't know, mm -hmm. oh, sad, sad lives. Um, <laughs> you know, they would just stop on their own, wouldn't they? They would just, you know, you don't have to do anything. You'd have to turn it off. They'd just stop playing. And then if you wanted to play it again, you just press play, right? And so you just leave it. And then you'd think it was just stop, but it wouldn't. It'd just be silent instead. And then all of a sudden you'd get this secret track and it was the fucking, oh, that was that, oh, it's top tier experience as a teenager. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's teenage sex is rubbish. <laughs> that's something I always sort of regret when when I talk about music these days is that experience of you know like Pink Floyd the Wall is just it, like that is not a bunch of singles put together no that it's is an experience. yeah yeah it's that's a real bummer it's an um, immersion and oh, I'll tell you what there is nothing better than listening to that album vinyl you know yeah. like just hearing all of the little oh mm, yeah I mean, I get streaming. I understand why it's, you know, very convenient. It's very easy. 100% get it. But sometimes let's just work a little bit for the good shit in our lives. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's something to be said for like, hey, this song isn't my favorite, but it's such a nice lead into the next song. Mm-hmm. You know, that like Queen's that. Stone Age albums were like that as well in the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Queens of the Stone Age is a good Especially one. that song for the Deaf album, you know, with like you know between um i think it's like no one knows and first it giveth and it has that whole like spanish but because they had that whole thing in it it was like a whole like it was like a radio station and they had all of like the little segments in between and like you're flicking through the radio station you hear all these like things yeah i, I mean going back to like the chronic there yeah. were all the little bits in there uh the little comedy sketches the, yeah like yeah. the 20 dollar sack pyramid is a thing that i will always remember yeah you know or even like kanye's album you know college dropout when he's just like gonna get your degree Uh (laughs) uh-huh and all of that shit and eminem eminem was fucking awesome for that shit the fucking pool skits yeah i mean right you can't just listen to a pool skit on its own yeah you like there's a reason they're placed there and that kind of thing it's a it's a lost art like i don't know the last time i listened to a new artist Mm -hmm. album cover to cover i actually probably the last time was like there was a a great concept album um by rock plaza central is the name of the group right and it was i think it's called are we not horses is the name okay. of the album okay. but but it is a a concept album about an electronic horse <laughs> having an existential crisis oh my god that's so cool and it, it's an amazing album what kind of music is it um it, it's this weird like nouveau americana or folk but it, it's nice. okay you know but it's it's a little a little alternative mm-hmm. you know it's not just like peter paul and mary it. kind of stuff it's got a little mm. more edge to it and um is that what it's called hold on but yeah so rock plaza central they they uh if you saw the movie the battery yes they wait yes they did most of the music for the battery oh is it yeah Sick. okay and nice. so, i really love that soundtrack yeah so if you if you like that listen to the whole album it's called uh are we not horses I mean, uh, about out. a cool. six-legged robotic horse in the midst of an existential crisis yeah and um yeah 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 it's yeah. It, it's a that album is absolutely terrific and there are mm-hmm. Uh, you know there are songs on it that i am less mm. fond of mm. you know but then like i remember oh, a show okay. we did not long ago where we were talking about like the drummer for modest mouse had died recently and not long ago i listened to all of good news for people who like bad news again which right. is a terrific modest mouse record mm-hmm. and I don't know it. it's i mean like there are a couple of songs that i don't like as much Mm. But the whole thing is just a banger, and mm. the and the songs that I don't like as much, I like them more the more I listen to them. Yeah, and, they yeah they grow, and also as well, if they're like part of a whole concept, then you know they're because they're part of an overall concept that you really love. That there's still a good quality there about them. Yeah, it just might not be to your personal taste. Like, yeah, yeah, like I I um have like like a, a really sort of relatively mainstream artist. Like, I mean, she's not like really, really mainstream, but she's pretty fucking famous. Um, but like Melanie Martinez does concept albums. And in fact, her second album, she made into a movie, um, which was all right. It was fine. But like, um, <clears throat> but the songs though, like are like we followed this, the, t- the two 
well, I suppose it's three albums, I suppose, because she did like a, an EP as well, which follows this character called Crybaby. And it's like her progression and all of the darkness that she has to deal with at home and school and growing up. And it goes into some real dark territories, but she does that thing where she'll, the melodies and the instruments that she uses is very playful and very light and very like, and if you would, I remember actually taking my kid to um one of those sensory playgroup things and every week there would be a theme right you'd have pirates you'd have i don't know whatever and one of them was teddy bear's picnic mm. and in the background when you had when you went off you'd have like story time you'd have like circle time and stuff and then you'd go off um, with your kid and they had all these different stations with different sensory stuff going on and they would play songs and they would always make a playlist that was based on whatever the theme was that week and so we had Teddy Bear's Picnic, right? And there's this song called Teddy Bear by Melanie Martinez, which is about domestic violence, drugs, and ultimately murder. Mm. And he had it playing because it he clearly just typed in Teddy Bear yeah, into yeah. Spotify and see what stuck. Heard this song, didn't listen to it too hard, but because the overall thing of it was actually very kind of like, very cutesy and very kind of like upbeat, and I was like, dude, I personally don't care. But if any of these parents clock these lyrics, it's got swearing in it. It's got everything, you know, and like, they're probably going to complain. He's like, I had no idea. I'm like, no, dude, I know you had no idea, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but like, I have this album and yeah, you don't want to be playing Melanie Martinez. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and she's just come up with a new album. There's going to be a whole new, you know, Cry Baby's Dead. And there's this whole new thing because I think she's realized she probably put herself into a bit of a box and she wants to do something else now. But, um, and then Taylor Swift's folklore album, there's all these theories about the concept behind those albums. And I listened to that album in full as well. But I listened to it out of order because there was someone who created this new order where if you listen to it like that and then you follow this story, it creates this whole heartbreak and it's just, oh, it's great. But yeah, concept albums. They are a thing, but they are definitely a dying breed, and it's very, very sad. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, even outside of concept albums, just like you know, I, I this is going way, way back, but even something like the Eagles Hotel California album, it's like that's right. not a, that's not a concept, but if you like, there is a rhythm to the songs. Of yeah. like this one is a little more mellow, and then this one's got a lot more guitar, and then you go back yeah. down a little bit, and it's, it, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's just a um, you know i it speaks i guess to a little bit to just modern attention spans of i'm here to listen to the song i like not experience what the artist wants me to experience on their terms i want to experience mm. it on my terms yeah and i think there is a bit of an entitlement to that and it's like and and i think as well like what's sad is that artists obviously are artists because they're creative for the most part like most of them are, like the good ones they are very creative people and it's annoying because they also have to placate to their audience about what their audience wants and you know they won't do big concept stuff like I mean unless you have the clout that fucking Taylor Swift has or Lady Gaga for example mm -hmm. but you know for you know you sort of average pop star stuff fucking insane but like you know they they do have to kind of cater to their audience and um you know if their audience isn't the type of audience that can deal with big concept albums or deal with like a bit of patience you know going from a to b to c then they won't do that and i feel like not only does that sort of stunt their creativeness but also just like think about what could have been you know you have these these really talented people being stunted like that and actually we're missing out now yeah 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 it's cheers uh, gen z and tiktok generation <laughs> <laughs> uh all right uh so our final act of business here this evening yes yes is to discuss uh tinder yep speaking of haunted vaginas mm -hmm. uh yeah. what 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 tinder ghosts have uh have come across your radar that perhaps might haunt your vagina not not come across my radar not my face right <laughs> <laughs> right well um, you know depends on no, what you're into these have these would definitely swipe less um so this first one is quite appropriate for our show um today and our themes and stuff uh -huh. um is is jack he's 35 okay all right and this guy, I don't want to be a judgment person. Okay, I definitely am. Some, we all are. Um, 
<laughs> but he is the most he is the most white bread but also could be a serial killer type person <laughs> i don't know that the two are exclusive i'm with you yeah in fact i'm gonna put my camera on and i'm just gonna show you sorry listeners but all right let's see know. this oof okay yeah i'm with you yeah I, right. Oh, all right. I, I, all right. I saw. Did you read the caption? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, yeah. you do it because this is this is too good. <laughs> Horrible, right? Um, ignore my no makeup today, by the way. Um, I don't have kids, but I can be your daddy. Uh, uh. Complete with devil emoji, water spray, water spray emojis. <laughs> and then he's just gone five ten, one hundred and sixty pounds. <laughs> I don't have kids, but I can be your daddy. But with like this, the face does not match the bio. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> right. It's a little too. It, it, white bread is a good a good word for it. He looks like he could be trying out for a part in a Beatles reunion movie. Yeah, like I think it's the but haircut. Not getting it right. Yeah, he has a kind of a bit of a bowl haircut. Like there is no product in that whatsoever. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure, and um he's yeah. just got he's got one of those you know he could get away with murder because he's got the most bland fucking face in the world you could not really describe it yeah yeah it, it's very it's just, like you're right like he could be a serial killer because he could just blend into any crowd oh, of, yeah. of white people anywhere i'm gonna say white man privilege right there Psh, getting yeah. away with murder mm-hmm well no, all he's got to do like you just stab somebody and it's like fucking assassin's creed or something you just go into yeah, a group I mean, of other Christ, white the guy people be more average five ten 160 pounds brown hair white so anyone right you know favorite the hemisphere, you favorite know? food soup you know <laughs> he likes bread <laughs> right and yeah music and films i like toast but no jam because that's <laughs> that's getting a little crazy and unsalted butter for me, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, crazy. all right. So right, let, Jack yeah. 35 wants to be your daddy, but looks like he could be a chaperone to a middle school dance. Yeah, an actual daddy. Um, this, oh, this guy. Okay. <clears throat> we mm -hmm. have Alex, from who's 34. Okay. Six foot one. Yeah, all right. Tall guy. Flip. No, no, it's literally his bio. He's made that known. Mm -hmm. Six foot one. Just returned from three months in Thailand. Puts the Thai, uh, sorry, Thailand flag there, just in case we weren't sure. Mm -hmm. um, in Thailand, to the snow. Needs someone to break me in gently, wink face. If you're a chubby girl, don't waste either of our time by liking me. I like feminine, physically fit women with something going on upstairs. I'm right wing and a Trump supporter, so no slippery lefties either. Oof. Okay, emoji american flag emoji oh boy Yay. that at, the, at first it's like okay you went to thailand that's kind of interesting you're a world yeah. traveler you're tall you're a bit of a flirt needs someone to break me in gently wink face oh okay and he's not a bad looking guy he's a good looking guy yeah but as soon as you get to the like hey no fat <laughs> fat girls no fatties <laughs> you're right no fatties also no, you can have a type but you don't have to fucking shame people right right like, you know, like the way to say that is, is not the don't bother liking me. It's saying like you know prefer athletic body types, yeah, something or like even that. Just that these things come with photos for a reason. You don't even have to say. Just don't swipe right. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's quite easy, and, yeah. it's just, and as well, there's something going on upstairs. As though as soon as you get over a certain weight you just all your brain cells just die and i think that's the the lefty thing too is like oh if you're gonna be you know like there there's something about those kind of maga types that they yeah. think they're the only people who really understand what's going on in the world <laughs> yeah yeah and like so if you're gonna get butt hurt by this comment then i don't want to fucking talk to you kind of thing like yeah uh, <laughs> i really want to know who's swiping right on this guy I'm sure somebody has, but you know it's a big world. Oh, but that selfish. one's that one's pretty rough. I, of the two, I would rather have white bread than yeah. I would yeah right. Like you know the the guy masquerading as normal, as opposed to the the person who is just upfront telling you like I'm an asshole. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, right. All right. So. Uh, you ready for number three? Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. What's behind door number three? Boy, it's it, yeah, it's a been a real mixed bag so far. Let's go. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna love this. Um. Also, how did do you know what this is? Masego. I don't know if I do know what that is. M a s e g o. Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. But I'm looking it up. Okay, have a look it up and see if this changes anything. All right. Um, but but keep going. Okay, so this is Hannah. She's thirty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Extrovert, a ray of freaking sunshine. Please stop with the foul talk. It makes me want to throw punch you. <laughs> brownie points for great spelling. Extra brownie points if you love Masego. Whatever the fuck. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense now because Masego is an artist. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. No, ah, right. Okay, cool. So, please stop with the foul talk. It makes me want to throat punch you is what gone. So, you're more offended by swearing than physical violence. Yeah, sure. Cool. Yep. Um... But she's a ray of freaking sunshine to be around, apparently. Yeah, so okay yeah. and the masego stuff like i haven't listened to it but yeah this seems fine he's kind yeah. of a jamaican okay r&b singer right. that seems okay and um, i also like you know i am also a stickler for things like spelling i'll never shame someone i'm not there like correcting their spelling on their replies but i will notice if you don't know the difference between your your and your mm-hmm. oh for sure or your yeah, and your yeah. even sorry and or there there and there even yeah yeah no but uh, they won't dock at your points. Okay. Actually, do you know what? If someone is too good, it freaks me out. Oh, really? Yeah, because I feel like they're really trying. And I'm like, why are you trying so hard? Oh, but it... I um I basically write I my my like not to I don't there's no fucking non uppity way of saying this, but my grammar and spelling is fucking impeccable. Like the only reason I'll do a spelling error is because because I want to. Like I'll write though <laughs> as in like T H O because it's like internet speak. So, I was talking to some of the like uh it's um, such a pompous thing to come out with, but I can't help it. No 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 I I'm on board with you because uh the other English teachers and I were talking the other day about uh like proper punctuation in text messages and Mm -hmm. how people in our lives are like you don't you don't have to do that you can just like you can just text the words it it, like the capitalization and the apostrophes don't have to be in the right place and that kind of thing it's it's just a text and i was like well Mm. i can't i can't do that that's no i can't right it's ingrained my mom's my mom's an or used to be an english teacher there's just no fucking way are you kidding yeah 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 yeah. i mean and and other teachers were like on taking the the opposite side of that like no it's just it's just a text message it's like no it's the english language don't you understand don't yeah it doesn't matter how it, the format in which it comes it's yeah. still and like and i think as well because apparently right so, right you, we've had a few conversations now yes do i do i speak posh as in like the actual words that i say no, I wouldn't say posh, but I mean you're you're well spoken. You know how to express yourself, but I would not say that you you speak in a way that you're trying to alienate anyone. I used the word unbeknownst the other day and got the absolute rip pissed out. No, piss ripped out of me. Sorry. Well, but... unbeknownst that's like a like unbeknownst to me. How how are you supposed to say that? That's just that's well, how you say it. But here here's the thing. This is this is a thing that we have noticed in uh in the business of English teaching, Kate. <laughs> um that one thing that it, it comes up a lot is that just basic vocabulary is on the downswing of just the the, the amount and number of words you know. The younger well, I mean, obviously the younger you are, the fewer you know, but like at high school age compared to previous generations of high school students, their vocabulary is really bad. You know, it's, 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 it is more primitive and, you know, I'm not sure to what, what to chalk that up to exactly. It's something we've talked about of, you know, is this, 
a, a matter of COVID? Is it a matter of, you know, just I, I genuinely think text that people messages. don't have the attention spans to read anymore. That's a that's a big part of it. That's a big part I of it. Think, yeah. Like there was this um this guy who I'm messaging at the moment, he's 27, and I had to tell him what the word succinct means. Oh, that's not great. Yeah. And like it was quite funny because he came to the table. He's a he's a really sweet guy. And I'm not trying to like put him down or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Like it is what it is. But like he came to the table kind of a bit like with a bravado of like, yeah, like I know. Um because on my tinder profile i've got like i'm really into horror films and all of this kind of stuff and he came to the tables of like uh yeah like i've seen every single horror film like of the last year and i'm like have you <laughs> i don't I, have you mm. and then he was like yeah and i know this and i know this and like you know whatever kind of like it was a kind of a jokey bounce thing but kind of like try and keep up little lady kind of thing <laughs> and i was just like oh cool so have you seen this I was like, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think of Argento's last work with dark glasses compared to his earlier stuff? Like, you know? Like, right, right, right. And then he was like, oh, oh, okay. Maybe I've just seen the ones at the cinema. I'm like, yeah, maybe you have. Yeah. Like, not to be a dip, but don't come at me, like, with this kind of, like, <laughs> kind of thing and just be like, and then, like, literally, like, it was that same conversation where, because I was, I started we were genuinely just having a conversation about horror then. Cause I was like, I, I let him off the hook. I knew I was being a bit of a dick, but like, you know, just to like, bro, you don't have to come in with that attitude. Cause if you want to come in with that attitude, I'll come in with that attitude, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, and then we were just chatting and I, and I, you know, was chatting about movies. So of course I went and like did a whole fucking essay for him. And I was like, sorry, that was a total essay. I, I have a real hard time keeping things succinct. And he was like, what does that mean? And I was just like, what? <laughs> what bit? Like, and then he was like, what does the sink mean? And I was like, oh, cool, 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 cool. Like, and it's not like to be a snob about it or anything, but I'm just like, I don't, how do you not know that? How do you not know that word? Yeah. You know, like, how do you not know, like, or like, how can, I don't understand, like, I don't know, maybe it's just, I just don't understand how you don't how you don't know a word like that or you don't like or like I get the piss taken because I'll use the word sporadically or I'll use the word unbeknownst or you know stuff like that and it's just like, yeah. like let's not make me smarter than I am the only reason I know the word sporadically is because I've watched Clueless well, <laughs> you know? well we do uh vocabulary work sometimes in class and one of the things that I do with vocabulary to make it a little more fun is I'll give them a definition and then we play hangman to figure out the word. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's all right. And, you know, like I give like a bonus point to whoever gets it right. Mm -hmm. And the the last time we did it last week, there was one kid that got probably three of the five words that we were drilling on um, mm -hmm. correct. And everybody was like, well, how do you even know that word? And he was like, I read books. <laughs> and yep. i was like you're right you're right like if you what read books word? yeah you will learn other words that you didn't know before yeah like i love it when i come across a word in a book and i'm like i don't know what that means oh project you know like i get to go on like well, ironically the internet <laughs> yeah <laughs> and look at that I, I just don't have a i don't have a dictionary like an actual hand dictionary um so i have google but like i'll look up the word and i'm like oh and then i try and remember it and stuff and then i was like you know, see if I can use it in a sentence that week, you know, without, I mean, unless it's like a real pompous word that like is going to force other people to have to look it up. But like, if it's a word like, oh, that's kind of cool. And it's like, I like I've come across that before, but I've never really understood it, but now I understand it. And like, I love that. That's a fucking such a nerd. What was the, um, what was the word that like had everyone stumped in your class? What was the word that this kid knew that everyone was like, uh, how do you know that word? I think, I think it was potent. Shut up. Yeah. Well, if they read fucking Harry Potter, then they wouldn't they wouldn't have a problem, would they? Yeah, I mean, there. I it was either that or peril. It was one of the two. Oh, fucking. But hell. but I mean, both of them were words that were like, I can't believe you don't know these. But how do you not know the word? Uh, oh, yeah. What are you reading? Nothing. You not nothing. Reading? Yeah, they fucking they don't read, read anything. Oh. And you know, but I, I'm with you. Like when you come across a word that kind of captures an idea, mm. and that you're like, oh, I want to use that. Like uh, when I learned the the German word Velchmertz. 
Ooh, what's that? Tally? Belchmerz is the the disconnect between the way the world is and the way that you know it should be. And that, that sense of like ennui that you have oh, when you're like, oh, there is yeah. like, right. The, the, like when you go to, when, when you hear the way that like, oh, healthcare didn't work for this person because they were making just a little bit too much money or whatever. And it's like, it shouldn't be like that. And that feeling yeah. is Velchmerts. That's constant right now. Yeah. And yeah. the the other That's... one I, re- I really like is uh, Carsonization. Ooh, what's that? It is uh it it is a scientific phenomenon in which all crustaceans are basically ev- evolving into crab like forms. <laughs> and so that no matter what kind of crustacean it is, they all veer towards crab like in terms of their evolution. Yeah, and I mean that that one's less relatable, less usable, but it, right, still good to know. Yeah, it, it, like totally unusable in common speech. But the idea yeah. of like, oh yeah, that if it, every crustacean in the in the entire known world is slowly but surely becoming a crab, that's ter- that sounds terrifying. Uh, right, sounds- it, that's crazy, right? And when, when I heard that, I was like, Ugh. and it not only is it a phenomenon that they had to put a word for, uh, put together a word for it to be like, yeah. oh yeah, this is th- like nature is constantly trying to evolve things into a crab. Oh no, I don't like it. No, <laughs> the fucking sea spiders, I don't like it. All right, all right. So, I'm, oh, I'm uh, bed soon, Bo. Enough, I enough. All night. Enough about crabs. Let's get back to Tinder. <laughs> Because oh, yeah, the so source of all crabs. Like, uh, um, yeah, okay, Alex, so the Trump guy definitely has crabs. All right, so let, let, all right, we got to rate these. There's there's yeah. there's white bread cereal there's killer. Yeah, there's, white bread cereal killer daddy. Yeah, then there's <laughs> then there's uh, Trump loving fatty hater. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the irony though as well. Right, right, right. <laughs> no fatties yeah, except but... for this person i admire who's yeah. got substantial haunches um <laughs> and also as well like he's just oh wait no no that's me assuming wrong that's me 2am brain nope as you were sorry ignore me <laughs> yeah and then we've got ray of freaking sunshine who likes to throat punch people yeah that all right <laughs> wonder why i'm single <laughs> i think i think i'm one three two is my ranking one, like i think three, serial three. killer is number one yeah I think yeah. throat punches. He's fairly kink friendly, so that's open minded. <laughs> sure, and you know if he's a serial killer, he's at least going to put on a mask of civility. Oh, uh, there'll be a Netflix documentary for sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, which is all that I ask. And you know, and also as well, he doesn't have kids, so that's a that's a bonus. Yeah, yeah, a lot of upsides. Which I know is very rich coming from me, but you know, eh. um, I don't need anyone else's kids. So sure. um, yeah. And like you know, yep. There's yeah. So there's this guy. <laughs> I like the name Jack. It's a good name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm the same as you because then Hannah, although she likes to throat punch people, apparently, mm-hmm. or at least she wants to. Maybe she doesn't do it, but it just makes her. Yeah, I can understand that, but I don't think me and her will get along because I swear all the time. Sure. I don't. I think she would throat punch me because I do swear constantly. Yeah, but I would rather I would rather be throat punched by a decent person because she like she's a little judgmental. No, no doubt about that. Yeah, but she also favors great spelling, which we have in common, and mm-hmm. she likes art and music. So yeah, like maybe not compatible, but at least you know there there's some common ground to talk. Yeah, and yeah. she's got she's got she got some good curves. Oh, yeah, that that's not bad either. No, nah, she's got yeah, they got like bountiful, I think is the word. Oh wow. Yeah. She's got an hourglass, but she's like she's like a bit bigger but like cinched. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like like all the right places kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like she like she would have definitely done well. I don't mean this this is gonna really kind of like um what's the word i don't mean to like diminish her or demean her or anything mm-hmm. or like whatever but like she would have made a great 60s pinup cartoon you know oh sure, <laughs> sure, sure. or something you know like this hips wiggling you know uh, see that's so, my speed right there 
Mm, yeah, I think you'd like this lady, actually. Except for all the foul language I use. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't want to get th throat punched either. No. Um, then, yeah. And then, yeah, Alex can go fuck himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that whole, like, I'm if you're carrying extra weight, then I, I don't want nothing to do with you. Like, A, you're limiting your dating pool, but more importantly, you're just being a dick. Yeah, like, as I said... You, it's okay to have a type sure it's absolutely okay, it's okay to find certain things attractive and certain things not attractive it's not because you're necessarily anti-fat it's just because while you have no problem with fat people it may just not float your boat however to phrase it like if you're a chubby girl don't waste either of our time by liking me also either of our time not either of our times fucking idiot i like feminine physically fit women with something going on upstairs yeah bro you're just been a prick at this point mm-hmm yep that's not having a type. That's just flat out being an ass. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. I don't like this guy at all. No, um, you don't like him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, once again, uh, Tinder as the flesh has given us uh, so much. Mm -hmm. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, well, apart from to me personally, I just keep getting fucking ironically keep getting ghosted. I literally am living both of our segments. <laughs> ghosted and Tinder is the night. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 or Tinder is the flesh, rather. Um, Tinder is the flesh, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, Tinder is the night as a whole work of art. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess then that brings us in for a landing. It does. And so next month is May. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know what we're going to do next month yet. You got no, any thoughts? I'm not sure either. We All right, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we, we'll we'll discuss. We'll yeah. muse behind the back behind the scenes. Yeah, but it, it's been nice because it hasn't been that long between episodes. No, yeah, and, I was thinking like it doesn't seem very long. Yeah, and but that's nice because it it affords us the opportunity to to chat more. And now that it does. you know, I also am newly single. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we can we can. Like here's, but th this is the thing. Like you'll get laid way sooner than I will. Yeah, no, oh, not at the rate I'm fucking going. No, I won't. Look, I'm not even right now. I'm just like, you know what? I'm j I'm just gonna read a book and watch a little TV for a couple of months, and then we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. I bought a new vibrator. That's how bad it is. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't bought a new flashlight or anything yet, but. <laughs> you know yeah i was just like yeah that's that's if i'm not getting it for real i've got to stimulate it not stimulate it simulate it <laughs> it's the beauty of the hand for men it is yeah this is it it's all you need like it's yeah it's not it's not it's just fingering yourself it's just it's not the same yeah yeah it's just not the same sure. you can't get the angles as well it's also like you i mean i've been very lucky with guy guys lately in terms of size mm-hmm my i've got i'm five foot two for christ's sake there's only so much my fingers are gonna do but, yeah you know so yeah. yeah i've got a vibrator and that's that's the that's the sad point of my life not that having a vibrator is anything to be sad about but when you buy a vibrator because you're not having sex and not through lack of trying <laughs> well look it is <laughs> on that uh, depressing note <laughs> no no spring has sprung you're only two weeks away hopefully uh you know you're a paramedic as well right right like you know uh your kid has a birthday and then the next day you get to blow out some candles of your own <laughs> i get to eat my cake, eat my cake. <laughs> yeah somebody ought to be eating your cake you he's know gonna what be saying? eating my cupcake that's right a little frosty <laughs> on the cupcake um <laughs> yeah uh, i'll make sure to let everyone know <laughs> yeah yeah please do keep us all posted uh also uh where can people find you if they want to hear more of these cupcake related stories oh god um <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't really talk about I actually i did talk a little bit um uh -huh. on on the latest episode i gave people a bit of an update because i told on the other show people about the the cabinet and it has been restocked by the way nice it's been nice replenished um and and there it will sit for about a year because i don't really drink that much but i just like the fact that it's there you know if i do want one it's there it's fine yeah. although actually my mum is coming to stay so it probably will go back <laughs> she does like a gin and tonic um not in an alcoholic way but just in a you know she's on holiday and she's my mum with her yeah, girl sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, if you're on vacation you have all the gin and tonics you you want 
oh yeah exactly um so yeah and then like I mentioned about how the sociopath had got back into my dms and I was, I was like oh and by the way if he is still listening to my show which according to D- his, my, the dm he is mm-hmm. uh he can fuck off <laughs> nice nice I was like go fuck yourself because i'm not doing it anymore yeah way to weaponize the podcast i like it well i mean should fucking listening to me i look i wish i had more enemies and exes listening to this right now but <laughs> you can tell them a few things yeah but they don't they didn't give a shit when i was dating him so there's no reason <sighs> well you know. yeah anyways uh so yeah so my other show um you won't really you'll hear much more of this stuff on here but um you will hear my opinions on movies and shit over there and that's just as fun uh no it's a good show um and that is Ed, uh so eternal darkness of not so spotless minds or edonism for short and um yeah our facebook page is www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash edonism pod and then our insta is at edonism underscore podcast and you can find us on all your usual places at spotify anchor uh, apple google stitcher yeah um fill your boots there'll be a new episode dropping in the next couple of days well, days sorry once i get my ass around to actually fucking editing it and um uh yeah so enjoy basically yeah excellent and uh, mm. uh as for me just you know keep tuned in here loyal listeners and there will be Always. more episodes of heart of horror where we talk about doing it doing it yeah right R- right in the you genitals do it. What? <laughs> right in the, what? the genitals <laughs> yeah that's uh that's scientific way to describe it i mean yeah no it's it's it's, it's, it's something mm-hmm. all right see you in a month <laughs> bye